what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which I strongly advise you all join. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Now we are currently joined by both a Discord and Google Plus Hangouts on Air panel, so I'll pass over to them while I set up for the live show. I will also say that we have ball busters, so this is actually being broadcast on Friday, so tomorrow 8pm uh, UK time and 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. There will be Ballbusters live, so be here or be sphere. Also, I'm going to do a quick shout out to my Patreon. So, a massive thank you to all who do support me on Patreon. You may or may not be aware that this show is entirely supported by the people who watch it. So, a massive shout out to all of you who watch, but of course, a massive shout out also to people who support me on Patreon. So, Alistair Mine, uh, Chow Young Cat, Christina Barker, Dank, uh, David Wayne Foster. Jaronism, God Rockin, what else we got? Scroll down a little bit more. Kirsten Smith, Matt, No Proof, Peter Berger, or Berger, and Rene Kalukia. I hope I haven't butchered your surname, but thank you very much indeed to all the people who support me on Patreon. Hopefully over the course of the next weeks and months, I will do a lot more with Patreon. As I say, I will hand over to the panel so you can enjoy their dulcet tones, as I say, while I set up for the first live show. Local, in other words, that Earth reaches out as through by magic. Now, when these guys have to use the word magic as many times as Musser did. No, but... You know what they mean with as by magic? It means that they don't know what causes it. Thank Whatever you very that. much. This is why Craig's statement of mass warping space-time is gravity, but we don't know why it happens. Mooser jumps in and says it's magic. So where right. is the science? Where's the science? They should right. call it wizardry. They don't know. They just presuppose it. They did away with Newton's concept and replaced it with nothing, with more presuppositions on top. That's well, what they I mean. even say, they, at one point, he says that it was the magical component of Newton's law. I never heard Newton refer it that way. Devastating. That interview on Fight the Flat Earth with George Musser, when it comes to the December show on Nathan Oakley, and we take a vote as well as the biggest and most embarrassing moment for the group dark this is going to be in the top three this is another one of my favorite quotes from this guy right we can, quote we can we do we must think of newtonian gravity as a force that doesn't <laughs> mean it really is one but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, oh, good uh, quote unquote are you kidding me? We don't have to work at the really is level. My God, yes. what a disclaimer. Yeah, that's who why I wrote it. It was one of my favorites, besides that you can think of it as a force. But I was like, wait, did he really say that? Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, I think it's at 11.10 in that interview. You said George Musser said that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I made a slide on it and put it at Master B. Yeah, I'll read it again. We can... Quote, we can, we do, we must think of Newtonian gravity as a force. That doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. And he even put really is in air quotes. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Holy shit. Out of the mouth of yeah, the fools. Out well, of the mouth of the fools. Wow, they're getting right. really meta with this. No, they're pseudoscientists. That's what they are. They're pseudoscientists, metaphysical priests, is what they are. They're getting really meta. They're just digging the hole further, that's all. Right. Wizardry. Uh, they're just deepening they're the presupposition. 
Like Huey That's said, you just gotta let the talk and the hang the balls. I think by now we should we should kind of like declare gravity as the gravitational foundational presupposition. Uh, somebody was over talking. Uh, or when you were over talking, somebody had something to say. I didn't hear them. What they say? I said, like you said, you just gotta let them talk, and they hang themselves. Exactly. Go ahead, Arwen. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, well, you have to be the one to actually pull the trap door to hang them. <laughs> I think that's the problem with Spurs. Are you still here, Spurs? No. Um, oh, hey, hey. Yeah, I was going to say well, you don't want to be the hangman. You want to be the good guy consoling them. Uh, what consoling them? Um. Yeah, you want to be the hospice um, worker, basically. Right? Spurs. Well, Spurs. Did you do you see where the problem Spurs is? is the I preacher. seen I seen you yesterday on the show. Um, not on this show, but on the other show. The problem is number one that you're moving this into a vacuum. There is no natural vacuum, so you're begging the question right there. And number two is they're just observing an effect, right? They're just observing an effect. There is no cause, but they're trying to impugn a cause on an effect just by fiat, just by uh, word usage, right? Are you following that? Vacuum is a concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, but now we um, there is no effect. You guys, you guys were right. We were all right. There is no force. There is no effect. So they can I'm... really think of it as a force because it's yeah, been demonstrated. I'm... We have two effects in the vacuum. What vacuum? And uh, they they can't describe. <laughs> yeah. it. Vacuum. Vac vacuum. Vac first what vacuum? The vacuum. What vacuum? Vacuum. vacuum first? I wouldn't say it's a vacuum. It's not. It's not a vacuum. It's like low pressure, right? That's not what I mean. I mean, what vacuum are you referring to? Are you re referring to a begging the question no, no, fallacy that, of the vacuum of the sky? That, or am I not even going to get to actually ask you the question? Because you'll start answering it before the end. So are you talking about the begging the question fallacy we're trying to drum into you, which is the assumption that the sky is a vacuum? Or are you talking about a vacuum that a man has made and is basically meaningless in terms of an example towards the earth itself? Which one are you talking about? Um, yeah, neither, because then they're, they're not a vacuum, are they? They are very, very low pr pressure systems. We can't create a perfect vacuum, so there are no vacuums. Can we have a new so I've got icon, to change that. a new, wait, wait a new a notification second, Nathan, when, Nathan. when when Spurs oh, uses a slippery oh. baller tactic, which is answering a different question? So the perfect nature of the vacuum isn't what I'm arguing. I'm Thank asking you. specifically what type of vacuum, regardless of how good of a vacuum it is, for the God's sake... Which vacuum are you talking about? A man-made vacuum, which has no relevance to the Earth, or the begging the question vacuum, the sky vacuum, outer space vacuum that doesn't really exist because it violates laws of nature? Which one are you talking about? Yes, both. Both. Whatever they think. You can't be works. talking about both. There we go. Okay, you've answered both. No, therein lies the problem. One doesn't exist and is assumed to be real, but demonstrated in the other that does exist, but is man-made. Therein lies the problem. Last year, and we measured it. You can't just tell them that. You have to oh, demonstrate God. to them that it's not what it is. I know, yeah, again, I know what you're saying, but We're, for the born earthers, they find it very difficult. The you're, truth you're, hurts. Oh, Spurs, you're saying you say we to have them, to. Oh. Spurs, Spurs, you're saying we have to demonstrate it. We're not making an extraordinary claim. I'm not claiming the sky is a vacuum. That's not my supposition. Why would I have to demonstrate anything? You're, you're, you're claiming it's not a vacuum, Nathan. So you have yeah, to I've not made the extraordinary claim that it is a vacuum, an affirmative claim, a positive claim. You're making that not. claim. You're claiming it's not a vacuum. Yeah, so and I disprove claim. it. Yeah, and I can disprove your claim with a natural law. No, you need to demonstrate this guy. This space isn't isn't a vacuum by going up there and yeah. showing us. Yeah, I do. Because by saying you can't you have it, you it violates. Uh, You've rebuttal. never demonstrated. This, rebuttal. So you're not going to get her. Dawn's here. No rebuttals allowed. Right, Dawn. Do I, do I only get two words? No, I'm, just making, do I, just no, I'm asking it, a question. Do I only get two words, Dawn? Is that all I'm you allowed by you? 
that the sky isn't a vacuum. I'm just yeah, I heard the first three times. That, I, I'm not asking you to repeat it. That's the problem. You repeating the same shit over the top of the rebuttal. I'm asking if I only get two words. Is that all I'm allowed? Now he goes silent. Yeah? Why can't you say silent while I'm giving a rebuttal as opposed to repeat the same shit we've heard twice, a third time, over the top of it? What, why do you do that, Dawn? I'm asking that question now. And we're going to be met with silence again. So that, you, so that you found it harder to misrepresent what I said. So I was just making it doubly clear. I hadn't even said it. Misrepresent it? You hadn't even heard it. You were talking over the top of it, Dawn. Well, you usually misrepresent it. So for that, that time, I decided to make it doubly clear. Okay. I'll shut you up right now, then. You usually interrupt me. So what I'm going to do, preemptively, is shut you up and you don't get a talk chance to talk here, then, Dawn. Because you constantly interrupt. So based on the constant interruptions, now whether or not you, it's because you assume that I'm going to misrepresent you, because based on your fundy belief, I have misrepresented you, according to you, even though you won't back that with any shred of evidence whatsoever, or demonstration, or quote, you'll just claim it, baseless assertion fallacy. And then interrupt me continually without any justification during a rebuttal. So we still haven't got to the rebuttal, just got to another baseless assertion. There's no rebuttal. You haven't demonstrated that as a fact. Right. The rebuttal is as follows. There is several natural laws that are violated by an extraordinary claim that the sky is a vacuum. Those natural laws are not limited to Boyle's law and the second law of thermodynamics, which would dictate that you would need a container to press upon, because without the container, the implication by way of second law of thermodynamics would be that the gas would fill the space. Boyle's law would dictate that you just simply need a container to actually press upon in order to have pressure in the first instance, the volume of which would dictate the pressure. So there are two natural laws that aren't going to be violated that aren't going to be demonstrated to not be true, because if they were, they would not be laws. That is my rebuttal. Just lots of words and no demonstration. Uh, I... Oh, God. No, go on, John. No, well, no demonstration. It's two laws. First, the law, or the second law of thermodynamics. You're saying the second law of thermodynamics hasn't been demonstrated? No, I'm saying you haven't demonstrated the sky isn't a vacuum. But the second law of thermodynamics has yeah. been demonstrated. Blah, 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 blah. You haven't demonstrated. Oh, so, blah, 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 okay, blah. blah. Right, end of Dawn's time here. Blah, 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 over the top of a response. Not welcome here, Dawn. Just... And don't talk to Dawn anymore. He's not, he's not part of the conversation. He's not part of the conversation. Don't worry about it, Tenth. He can't. He's done. Good. I'm glad he's done. Because, uh... I think I think how he's treating it is that um, there is the what you're talking about in in nature. So there's a natural world, and I think what he thinks is that there is a point in time, or a, there is a place where the natural laws go away and give way to other things, and unless we go to that place, we wouldn't be able to prove it. And even, you know, it's like telling us to go to space. That's ridiculous. Well, it's, it's how the could same. We even, how could we even oh. do that? It would cost, you know, millions of dollars, first of all. It's, it's akin to me saying, according to the narrative of Narnia, there's time dilation issues in Narnia. You go in the wardrobe, you could spend 50 to 60 years in there, come back out, and only a few minutes have passed in the world on the other side of the wardrobe. And you go, yeah, but that's just a made-up place. And I say, go to Narnia and disprove it. Exactly. Because, I mean, that's the thing. The, the natural world is all, all we have access to. So. Yeah. Is Spurs yeah. still here? It's, yeah, yeah, I think so. Spurs. Well, yesterday yeah. in the after chat, Don Hang on, hang on. Hold on, hold on one second. Spurs. Go ahead, Spurs. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Spurs. You know, I was in sales. And the people who had problem living on commission were pushing the rope instead of pulling the rope. Do you understand that image I just gave you? Push the rope versus pull the rope. Uh, 
what I was about to say. No, no, uh, no, I'm, don't. I'm asking a direct question. When I use an illustration of pushing the rope versus pulling the rope, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Keep it to the topic. Of course, I know what you're saying. What am I saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. What you're am saying I saying? They're pushing the rope and. No, you. You're pushing the rope or you're pulling the rope. What am I saying? Oh, my God. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely join. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now, I'll do a quick shameless plug for our own show, which will be taking place on Saturday, 8 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Central Standard, which is Ballbusters Live on the Flat Earth Proofs. Now, we are currently joined by a whole bunch of people in discord and we also have the adam meekin sleeping warrior flatzoid paul chocolate saying arwin anon moto and 10th man on google plus very good to have you all good afternoon hello 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 there hello, hello. just do a quick hello. bit of housekeeping any signs of earth curvature nope nope, nope. nothing here in hello. discord any evidence of axial rotation? Of the Earth-based variety? Earth Aranti's not here, so he's not going to give us a load of puns. But, oh, there we go. go not Adam, a little go. bit. Go, Adam. It's on the telly. I, well, I haven't just on seen the it on the telly. <laughs> it's on the telly on right te now. Telly box. <laughs> it's on the telly. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, are you broadcasting on the television, Adam? Well, a lot oh, of people do watch on their TVs. Yeah. Giant finger in space, doing it. Yeah, I can see Is the cause the of that. Universal Pictures movie. Not to mention, we don't live on that model. That's just a plastic model. It has buttons. You know, when it says you are oh. here. It's all a lie. I told you the date. It's pretty real. <laughs> Having a date that makes where that's where I live. <laughs> it's <then>. pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Adam. Yeah, it's, this isn't Men in Black. Up. We're not holding universes in our hands. So, right, we'll move past that, I think. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No. No. Nope, nope. Arr. About R. Uh, any evidence of the R value? Earth radius? Nine. No. no. There's Nine. plenty of evidence that it's widely assumed. Indeed, it is. Any scientific uh, evidence of gravity? No. 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 Do you understand the gravitas of that word? Gravitas and gravity <laughs> are different words. FYI. Yeah, I know. Wait. I want to read. It holds a lot of weight with ballers. Oh, boom. I want to redefine gravity as a relative density. So yes, there's evidence of gravity according to relative density. Uh, the, I want to redefine, gra no, no, I want to redefine that... gravity as um, the Nodel, Nora, and Doxy syndrome. Oh, I think chocolate should. Uh, I think was that a yes? Should, Did I hear a yes amongst that lot? Sorry him. to interrupt whoever was talking. Was that a yes from anybody? 
Nope. Anybody in Discord? Any scientific evidence of gravity? Okie dokie then. Bird landing. Well, well, yeah, birds landing. Yeah, and remember, <laughs> there's a citation from 4,000 years ago for gravity, so we're going to have to find that. Uh, we haven't seen any citations from 4,000 years ago. I heard a baseless assertion only in that regard. Yes, I saw on that rock next to that tree. It was by that cave. What, bird landing? No, the citation. The guy carved it on the rock. It was somewhere there. Uh, if, do you want to show us it? <laughs> if you say so. No, it's due to time, you know, weathering. It's all gone, unfortunately. Ah, time, the cause of all things. <laughs> Okie dokie. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of said presupposed spherical Earth? Definitely not, but uh, before we move on, I think Chocolate should read that uh, quote from Musa again. The yeah. new one. Yeah, absolutely, while we're on the subject of gravity. Go ahead, Chocolate, you, you there? Hola, Hola Chocolate. chocolate. Hey, yeah, brother, I'm gonna, give, me, give me one sec, give me one sec. Well, I'll just start talking. That should be a t-shirt. I got it, I got it. It's, okay, quote. Are you, are you on can, mute, John? You're on mute, John? Do... Hold on, you're, you're on mute, John. Uh, yeah, now I'm on mute. Um, Just to let you know, I'll be on mute. Still on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right, on mute. so the quote is, just stay on mute while he quotes, just as so long as you're on mute while he's doing the actual quote. Shut up! I, I, I am on mute, <laughs> just to let you know. Thanks, John, thanks. We can, we do, we must think of Newtonian gravity as a force. That doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. That should be a shirt. Should. Yeah, I agree. That was John Pusa, 2019. I think that even outdoes uh, the uh, oh, Elon Musk quote. It's go ahead, really, go ahead. Title the quote enough. again. Who said that? George Musser, 2019. I just want to hear it uninterrupted. Start with quote, end with end quote, and then name who said it. You don't have to put the year on necessarily, but just once more, if you would, please, chocolate. Gotcha. Quote. We can, we do, we must think of Newtonian gravity as a force. That doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. Unquote. George Musser. PhD planetary physicist. Yeah. Pseudoscientist really? extraordinaire. Well, I, well, he basically refined the concept of pseudoscience. I was thinking the same thing. You know, I. So, pseudo act is actually making progress. Like I have a million dollars in my account, but not have it. So. You can think of it as though you've got a million dollars. Nobody's taking the bait. Yeah, I can think no, I have I a million personally. dollars and act like I have a million dollars, but not have a million dollars. I, I really liked, I really enjoyed balls, balls, chocolate balls. doing it. Uh, I'm sorry. I really enjoyed chocolate saying that because I like hearing chocolate, but I don't like hearing the background noise. Can somebody read that quote again without any background noise, without anyone interrupting them slowly and clearly? No, Please. Choc Chocolate's the only one who's got it written down unless you have, and he's got background noise right. on his own mic. Look, look, I got a solution. Look, there is background noise, but you can just think of it as if there were none. <laughs> is, is the noise bad right now? No, no, it was fine. The quote came through clearly enough. Just about. But like right now, is it bad? No, it's perfect. It's clear as crystal. You want to try once more? All right. I'll try one more time. <laughs> Let's see if I can get to it. Okay, so, quote, we can, we do, we must think of Newtonian gravity as a force. That doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. Unquote. George Mooser. It, it was worth repeating three times anyway, even if it wasn't Amen. just for clarity, but perfect. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> it doesn't I, I deserve a round say, of applause. No, not loved having it. To no. Parrot their communicators, their scientific communicators. And then when we get one that bites them in the arse, they just deny, deny, deny. They're so disingenuous. Thank you. Yeah, this is a pretty open, closed case, right? <laughs> there is no denying it here. We just that's why we laugh so much when we when we can pick up, up against someone like Brenda and it's like, why is it unreasonable? What fallacy is being applied when I say that a non force is a force? <laughs> we just quote a bit of George Musa and laugh. Or concept or concept gives is, rise to a force. Right he, yeah. The thing is he is right when he quotes that they deny, 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 because that is what they do. That is their tactic, because everything that they've brought to us so far has either been shown to be wrong, been debunked, or basically it's pointed out that it doesn't comply with scientific method and it's fake science. So the only thing they've got left is deny, deny, deny. He's right. Basically a statement, defend that which is false. That's it. That which is religions, religion. Now, Defend like that to, which is admittedly false. I'd like to focus think, on the last. Uh, I'd I like to focus on the last part of that. Hey, hey, chocolate. Just the last few words of that quote, please. Again. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. Uh, I'll just read it all again because it's not that long. So we can quote. We can. We do. We must. Think of Newtonian gravity as a force. That doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. Unquote. Thank you. So we don't have to worry about what really is. Thanks. Exactly. Appreciate that. And what does what does physics primarily deal with? John? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Phys Physics deals what really is. So, so physics, we have a paradox. It's just, physics deals it's just with what the you really say, is. too. You say, is it a what is question? Right? Well, you could basically draw the conclusion from this that gravity does not fall under physics. We knew that anyway. Pseudoscience. 100%. I have a question for John. And I guess the whole panel. But let's just uh, assume gravity was a force. And force requires some kind of kinetic energy, I imagine. So, where one question could be where, the, where is that energy even coming from? And then also, wouldn't the whatever system it is, wouldn't, it, wouldn't that system constantly be losing energy? I can answer that. So what what I will do with my globe head hat on is pick something up and then start to assume the force of gravity and then ignore the process that preceded where I start asking questions about why it falls down down. It's not yeah, I mean, I guess, down, I guess down. In, in, Wait a second, we have a problem here again in Shangri-La. It's not fall down down. <laughs> it's fall down, go boom, boom. Damn. Sorry. Fall so down, they don't. Boom, they, boom. they don't have to know where or why because they don't have to prove it anyways. I guess. I guess. I guess I answered that. Well, the newest rhetoric pushes it out into the realms of of not only an area, technically not an area, but I'll get to that, that we can't reach or explore or work within, but also into the conceptual realm. Space-time isn't something that you're ever going to experience. So they've just taken something that was potentially physical in you know, uh, Reverend John Mitchell slash Cavendish gravity and pushed it out into the realms of the nonsensical, space-time bending, non-experienceable, you know, that's all they've done. So who's going to argue if you can't actually get into a conceptual medium to <laughs> start varying stuff? And you know, It's just nonsense. It's like they hid the evidence in the unreachable. Yeah, exactly. They hid it in a conceptual medium. Precisely, Arwen. Yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of this is also convenient because I get that a lot with evolution. 
and a lot of the theories that kind of come from the 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 sciences that are kind of borderline not science um or just completely not science kind of like what we're talking about um but i get it a lot with evolution like oh well we don't see that kind of change over a small period of time but if we just you know if we just added billions of years to it then we would see it and it's like how convenient is that and then it's like how convenient is it that you don't have to work with what really is you can work with these magical things Time has no causal effect. Time is a deduction based concept. I think it's John right. Michel, so, not John Mitchell. The deduction based concept of time is based on the standard progression of things like chemical reaction speed, entropy effects, basically. So the Speed of entropy is what we can use to deduce a standard time. And that's what humanity has right. done. If you, but it's a conceptual well, if you, thing. If you, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, thanks for that. I interrupted you. What were you saying? <sighs> I said that time is a, concept, is a concept. And it's derived from things like chemical reaction speed and entropy basically isolating the conditions but it's based on the progression speed of how things work and the rhythm of uh, energy spikes in in quartz crystal all of that impulses things in the world so it's derived from rhythm mostly i think natural rhythm i suck i, I, I said it's a measure of change that's, it's a simple, concise way of saying it, the measure of change, whatever that change is. Yes. So if exactly. you slow down entropy, I mean, I guess they would call that slowing down time. Is there, right. I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Conceptual. They don't go, no, they don't go that far. But there is things like, what is it, a cesium clock? Or one of these radioactive type clocks, supposedly, that can measure it under any conditions and it will be unhampered unham unham by any conditions changes. So although I've heard claim from ballers that if you go really high up with it, then for some reason time uh, very minutely it speeds up according to that system. That was very weird. I don't know if that's actually true. Well, it'll be by comparison, that. won't it? So even the, the current construct that we have, if it was infinitesimally accurate, would still not fit with the cycles of the celestial bodies perfectly based on the construct that we currently use. So even if you have the radioactive decay giving you a timing, that doesn't mean it's going to be accurate because the concepts being or attempting to match up with something that we observe in day-to-day -day life, well, matching up atomic decay with a conception of what the lapse of time sorry i can't think of another word that's why i'm stuttering a bit for the celestial bodies well you're never going to get those two things to match because they're different things agreed right but the cesium clock is used because uh it's easier to isolate the independent variable basically the reaction speed it's isolated the best compared to other physical mechanics. And of course, there's still, we can definitely derive from the, the celestial effects, daylight, uh, nighttime. Of course, that's the original system which time was probably derived from, based on the cycles. The most apparent thing. Yeah, was it, wasn't it the movement of the sun and the stars? Like, isn't that how they got, time? isn't that how they regulated time Oh, that's how they determined it that's the original base unit as it were unit the units were cycles the units of time were the cycles of the celestial bodies 
So then one day they just decided to go from that to a cesium clock. Right, because they figured out that there are other ways to basically de deduce time. Mechanics, chemical reaction speed, and radioactive decay. But it all remains uh, derived. It's all, yeah, doesn't make time a, a literal thing. It is conceptual still. I know. I just think it's uh, funny uh, when I hear people saying that they make up atomic clocks and things and because that changes or it goes out of sync with some other clock, that means time change. Like, that's just nonsense to me. Right. Well, you could try to migrate the concept of time and just declare it entropy speed. Yeah, but we started yeah, off at that point, though, didn't we, where we were saying, well, if you slow down the effects of entropy, does that mean you're altering time? Absolutely not. So, the, again, they're two different things. Mm. Right. One thing, <laughs> one thing that uh, I guess uh, astronomers say is that if you go far enough away from Earth, uh, oh. the time changes, which is interesting, so even though we haven't been far enough to experience yeah. that well it's what's more interesting is that a very, there's a very similar um thing occurring in narnia um there's time dilation as you go through the wardrobe obviously you'd have to go to <laughs> narnia to disprove this right i feel like that's again the huge the thing, whole the thing huge about thing time changing that... going upward sorry uh, even oh, with the cesium clock apparently there is an effect if you go upward where the breakdown changes but then to assume that time itself is actually the thing is changing, that's a bit weird because you could also approach it as, hey, the radioactive decay rate has changed. Why is that? You know? Um, I think scientifically, if I was a globe head, I would declare that location was the cause of that. <laughs> nice, nice. There is an interesting point there, if I may jump in. Go, the, for um, Go on. So let's say they have the cesium clock at different uh, heights, right? Now, how? So let's say if the cesium clock is changing at different heights, but the sun still appears over that spot, then are they saying that the sun, you know, throughout the year, that the twenty-four hours or the twenty-three point whatever, is getting out of sync? So how can you have the sun? No. moving around no. at the same no. time over that spot, no, but then the season that. clock it's under that sun at different altitudes rate. starts getting out of sync. Can you just repeat the end again? Sorry. Be would you wait? Bear with me, Marwin. Can you just repeat the end? Yeah, so let's say you have season clocks, um, you know, stacked on top of each other, say, zero meters, 100 meters, 500 meters. Now, if the clocks are out of sync, but the sun is still over them, so wouldn't it be like the cesium clocks are measuring time differently from uh, the movement of the sun? So does that mean the sun is moving slower at different altitudes? That doesn't make sense, right? Okay, go ahead, Alvin. It's like something weird about the way they measure time and they claim it's measuring time because then how does the, the sun still appear over that spot? You know, that's I'm that's sure that uh, answered very that. simple. They Got didn't it. take that into account. They didn't actually uh, use a celestial way to measure time. But there's difficulties with even doing that because, yeah, as you, as we know, when you go up higher and higher, eventually there's going to be weird phenomena concerning the celestial bodies, like well, stars just no longer being visible and that kind of thing. So it's kind of hard to really derive time from the celestial bodies if you go up very high so that could have been the reason if they even considered it okay, you're talking past each other he used the word measure specifically no, no response from um, no I'm, I'm in agreement with alwin uh in the sense that they, they've sort of got these two different systems of or, or we're looking at two different systems where you're saying they're trying to tell us that this radioactive decay is a form of measuring time uh, 
But then, of course, traditionally, the, the celestial bodies are a form of measuring time. But yes, we now have the issue of when you get higher, if you can't see the stars, then how are the stars actually moving and so on? So, okay, okay. Um, well, let me, let me address guess, hold, hold on. Let me just address yeah. that. So it's, it's, not a, it's not a measurement. It's a quantification. So it's, it's a way of trying to understand something as opposed to something that you can then reify into something you can run a tape measure along. It's, it doesn't work that way. So when you're trying right, to, right, yeah. to explain how something occurs, in this case, the passing of the celestial bodies for the sake of argument, you can then quantify that and give an explanation to make it easier to understand or to break down into certain chunks or do whatever you need to do with it. But, it, but if you then turn it into something else and say, well, then it's comparable to or it is measuring that which is occurring, then you're into the realms of reifying your concept it's basically deriving. Right, right. Noted. I use the word derive. But the issue remains is that there is a measurable difference between the, yeah, the radioactive decay because of the remnants also. So a piece or a clock, that clock system, that would it would have a twin. One would be taken up. And then after a long time or whatever, it's taken back. And the decay uh, is differing, basically. So basically what, a... what is concluded is that the radioactive decay is greater when it goes up high for some reason. Yeah, so how can they claim that as measuring time as being time difference as opposed to the rate of decay being different? They can't. Well, because it's very easy to presuppose, that's why. <laughs> yeah, they can't. Yeah, so they just work at the really is level. directly into the Einsteinian uh, conceptualization. Well, one yeah, of the things they don't even think about it. So now they say if, if the atmosphere is the rate of the. Sorry, go on. Typically, go on, atomic error. Hold on, Owen. Hold on, Owen. Go on, Paul. I said the problem is is if the um, atmosphere is relatively less less dense, that could be the factor that they're not accounting for in that. So somehow, because the more I think about it, the, any kind of chemical reaction has to have pressure of some kind. So if you're lessening the pressure, then that could be accounting for the radioactive decay at some level. So that's the one factor you haven't accounted for in that experiment or in that device or whatever. Not experiment, that device. But rate they're, of decay. Only, they're only posh egg times, right? It's, it's, it's a matter of mechanics. As, as Nathan said earlier, they're not time measuring machines. They don't actually measure time. Therefore, whatever effect they undergo is not related to time when you see a change in its readings it's related to its mechanics <clears throat> in the case with an egg timer it could be the density of the particles changes with the temperature do you know what i mean that would might slightly do it in the case of some cesium clock who knows maybe it is uh, radiation from the sun that affects it slightly but whatever it is it isn't Time, because it's not measuring time; it's just giving you a representation of what you've predetermined time. It's a, it's a correlation. It's 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 comparing. Yeah. So you're saying the rate of decay is very closely comparable to our quantification of the solar bodies when averaged. You know, that's all you're really saying. As convoluted as that may sound, but when you say measuring time, well, for your average layman, maybe in the examples that are being used when they explain what a cesium clock is, that's much more digestible. But is it accurate? Well, absolutely not. Well, it's just like measuring weight. No, weight what? is also conditional <laughs> and conceptual added. So it falls into measuring time is like measuring weight. It's not literally measuring, it's deriving it. Yeah, but would it be time? Would it time be a little different though? Would it be would it time strictly be a concept? Because weight, I mean, no matter what you want to call it, I'm sitting on my chair right now, it's producing some type of force, some type of pressure. If you want to call that weight, fine, whatever. But you know, that I'm doing something there. Now, time, what's happening with time? No, we're but just counting is, seconds. No, but weight uh, is more uh, a description added. It's not really a thing. It's a derived concept. Right, but neither is time, really, if you think about it. 
it's I mean, just it's our human no, understanding of it. Because if we wanted to, we could just change the uh, one second, the value of one second to a minute, and just change the word. Does it really mean anything? Well, yeah, because you know I mean? it's way yeah, chocolate. It does because they've derived it from something. So yeah, you could just arbitrarily increase the value, but it's it's a, a divisible of something else, and it's a divisible of the you know. I don't know if this is actually correct, but for the sake of Enter. argument, the average of the celestial movements, and then they derive that value from that, so you can explain it or quantify it or chunk it out however is necessary throughout the day. But does it mean anything? Well, one chunk of that time, does it mean the period of light? Well, no, because that varies. Does it mean the amount of time of decay in a radioactive whatever? No, it doesn't, because those two things aren't the same thing. It's just as simple as that. Right, and what's the point of this conversation? Because of space Clarity. time. So we, we started off the conversation by talking about gravity. And what is gravity? Well, it's the bending of a conceptual medium known as space time. And then we got on to, I can't remember who it was, somebody in the Discord t server was talking about the, the theoretical limit, I believe, you know, the speed of light. And then we were into how long that takes, and that comes back to time. Well. So so are we not begging the question by talking about the space-time bending? It's amazing. I mean, I, I forgot. I mean, not Go on. Week, not Somebody week. trying to get a word in on Discord. Before. Go ahead. So that's middle of May, I think. Right, enjoy your birthday. See you next week. See you next week. Good one. Oh, it's just somebody who doesn't know how to oh, use their mute button on Skype, on Discord. I'll give them a break. It's their birthday. It just means I've got to now figure out who it is. Oh, it's it's physics warrior. <laughs> right, it's popping on me. It's UK right. Truth. Oh, is it? UK hey, Truth. Yes, sir. Not oh, me. Oh, I thought I heard. I thought I saw your icon light up. Okay, well, it seems to have stopped anyway. Right, Anthony, I've got you present. Uh, sorry, Paul, I've got you presented. There, Paul. Mute. He's back. I was trying to get the mute button on, or off. I was just, I just brought this up because I think our concept of time does start with the celestial bodies, and because that's the only way we all can say, "Look, well, meet me at high noon when the sun is up high above your head," so we all have a, the same understanding, same convention. I think, and then we broke that down like how many? I mean, you. You could break it down into 24 hour periods or you could break it down into 20 hour periods. It just depends on how you want to break that cycle of the sun down. So time in one sense is a convention, but it's how we use that convention to measure what we see occurring in the world. So you, I think definitely we don't want to get those conflated. I just brought that up to show how we started the concept of time as always. Right. So back again, um, isn't it begging the question to talk about the bending of space-time? Yes, absolutely. It assumes that there is a conceptual medium in existence and that we are a sphere bending said medium. It, it so, begs so, a lot of questions, Tenth Man, yes. So can we add that to our uh, housekeeping now? What, any evidence of the conceptual medium of space-time? I like it when you put the word bending. Mm, I like text. Good. I like the textile of space time. Well, that's how they show it to kids. They literally will stretch out a piece of textiles and roll balls around on it. I want to know something. You said, "Isn't it begging the question to talk about it?" Wouldn't it be more begging the question to say that it's true? Yeah, that, that's what we mean, really. Oh, okay. To, to speak of it as we though it's real. Okay, we weren't real, because I didn't hear anyone say it was true. Um, I just heard everyone conceptualizing about it. Is that what he meant? I, I think, uh, speaking for Tenth Man, he's kind of speaking to the audience. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tenth Man. Yeah, I mean, uh, George, George, okay. Muser and George Muser is saying that uh, it replaced... Newtonian gravity, so we're saying any signs of gravity, and we say no. So then what replaced it? 
the bending of space time. Well, any evidence of the bending of space time? No. It's kind of redundant because that's what they now call gravity. Same thing. If they want to assume that it's a force, old school gravity, now out, uh, sorry, let's use Anthony's terminology, superseded, then you can argue that. If they want to claim it's the bending of space time, you can ask them to prove their conceptual medium. It's whatever they want, right? It's their gravity, <laughs> not ours. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's something that doesn't exist, replacing something else that didn't exist. Yeah, I'm not going to get too specific about their begging the question, 10th man. That, I'll leave that to them. Fair enough. Hey, you want to hear two more paragraphs from uh, George Muser? Oh, yes, please. Well, this is at the beginning when uh, Craig, fight the flat earth, asked him a question about snapping the wand. And George says, well, it fell on Einstein to explain it. How the objects, massive objects, exert what seems to be a force on one another. Literally, it's not a force. So the thing about Newton's laws, you can't take it literally. But Newton himself did it. That there is yeah. a force reaching from one object out to another. However, you can act as if there were one. And it's perfectly valid for the applications of Newton's laws to act as though this force is operating. Lovely. George Musa, 2019. Mumbo jumbo. That was my favorite. And the, third even, favorite if, quote. even if it was questionably uh, legitimate, uh, scientific theories, actual ones, never ever explain laws if they did then what they're attempting to explain wouldn't be a law anymore thank you i think what he's saying there is is look guys it's it's perfect all right if you want to figure out these terms in newtonian ways when you drop a weight on your toe the force that that weight is described as it's perfectly okay to use it but don't think that that makes it a force. It's not a force. It's just for the, that mathematics and using those numbers to calculate. They still work because actually, funnily enough, they were derived initially and back calculated from him dropping weights and then deriving a formula from the numbers generated by dropping weights. So, of course, they still work. Uh, we know they're not 100% accurate anymore, but what's significant with Moose is he's, he's, he's again in that paragraph, he's, he's quantified quite categorically stating it is not a force and although you can do all these lovely things with it doesn't make it a force still even though your numbers work do you think it's it's that part that people don't hear like they don't hear that the gravity is not a force part or they don't concentrate on it it's really just they hear, oh, you can still use it, you can still apply it, it manifests, it does all this other shit after it's not existing. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing I hear is gravity is not a force. So if something is not anything, I don't see how you can do anything with that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chocolate, but they want that statement to go unnoticed, but they then come in with the word acceleration. Now, if I see a bicycle leaning against a tree, I have to get on it and apply force to have acceleration, right? Right. So how can they have acceleration without a force that doesn't exist? Right. You were talking about lateral forces, but you know they would just take a brick to the top of a building, ignore that bit, then drop it, and then acclaim a force because of gravity in the downward direction. But, like you say, gravity's not a force. Well, they took the brick to the top of the building. It'd be similar to the bike being leaning on a tree, and next thing you know, it's leaning on a car, and you say, how'd I get here? Well, I drove it here. I and rode look, it here. Exactly. Look, look how it's driving the ball is crazy, because Rumpus came in today and said it is a force. And I think, was it today that Brenda said it? It wasn't. I'm starting to get confused now myself because it changes every week because rumpus last week was dedicated to it's not a force. <laughs> it's and this just week like it's 4,000 years old. 
Sorry, it's just like the Coriolis effect. Every time they get stuck into something, they just go. Yeah, yeah. It's one, one reference frame. No, 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 no. That can't work. Oh, it's two reference frames. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's like... the first thing they really started to do that with. Although maybe oh, the looming, non looming was the first really where that happened. But yeah, it's it's not the same anymore like that because we basically figured out optics. But then the Coriolis thing came, and that there they really went cognitive dissonant. And so if you, li- that, if you listen to George's, I'm sorry. If you listen to George's toe tag, he contradicted himself like maybe five times in in four sentences, <laughs> trying to explain to Nathan uh, the Coriolis. <laughs> it was preposterous. Like, oh my god. You mean, you mean George no, Nixon Nuke? Yes, yes, oh, the, that George. Yeah, the George. Yeah, which George? Nixon Nuke. Oh, the Pontiff Maximus of Retardia. Yes, that one. Yeah, yeah. He contradicted himself more than four or five times. Let me tell you. I think I did an exposition. No, I mean in just just like the four or five sentences. <laughs> like I listened to five minutes of it, and it was like contradict, contradict, contradict. Like wow, George, you don't even know what you're saying. He's tri- he's literally tripping up on his words because Nathan is is literally schooling him on how this Coriolis thing is supposed to work on Earth, but doesn't. <laughs> I thought I did an exposition on that. Did I post it in Master Bees? I think I did. Uh, possibly. If you did, I didn't see it. Well, you cut it out as a total. <laughs> you're like a drill thing. instructor. <laughs> I just wanted to come back to something Arwin said. So are you suggesting, Arwin, that in the same way Coriolis is layer upon layer upon layer of double speak, now that gravity has left them in a similar position, that yes. they'll just do the same thing and layer it up with double speak? Yes. Yeah, I agree. That's why one day it's a force, the next day it's not a force. Exactly. Uh, the, the third day it manifests itself as a force while not being a force. I mean, they, they just flip it and bounce it however they want. Hey, Nathan, I got another quote here from that interview. Craig is saying, Newton's thought that gravity act, Newton thought that gravity acted instantaneously. And George Musser replied, instantaneously, even more than instantaneously. It is that it didn't propagate through the intervening distance between the objects. So there's really no way that the force got from one place to the other in a sense of how it exerted its action. That was the magical component of Newton's laws, recognized by him and others at his time. So the in-between was void. So how did they try to measure acceleration with gravimeters and everything else when there's nothing in between? See, that that was one of the funny ways that George actually shut fight the fighter of down because you know while he's trying to assert oh it acted instantaneously and george is like no no that's not Mm -hmm. really what it is (laughs) it's really that it didn't act that way and there were a couple of times that george did that to fight the fight earth where he tried to kind of skate his way around you know him trying to back up his claim well what he's trying to do there in my opinion and i've heard it many times is saying that it's in one place and then it's in another place without transversing the space in between and any exertion that can be measured. So then why are we hearing that they can measure acceleration? Nonsense. It's like one dimension and then it's another dimension, but nothing in between happened. So how do you measure nothing in between? Just act like there's a force. There you go. He cleared it up with that one line. You can think of it as a force. Well, then it's not measurable. So there goes all the Bob Nodell acceleration experiments, so-called. But listen, like he said, when when they, whenever they choose, they could just they don't have to act at the really is level. Which is why that quote stands out to me so hard. Because so really, what you're saying is, don't ask me for proof. No. Nope. We don't have that. 
I put that exposition in Master B's chocolate. Ooh. Yeah, I see it now. It's full of timestamps as well. Yes, I have seen this before. I love the detail that goes into this. <laughs> awesome. I wish I wish my farm work could happen this way. I could just sit here and listen to the show and the weeds would pull themselves. See, but now now you're you're acting at the at the really is level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. O only rational people do that. Okay. Well, that's my cue as a rational person. Uh, I bid you farewell till tomorrow. I have to go apply some force. I'm All farming. right, man. Have a good one, brother. You too, guys. You'll be gone, but we'll still think of you as if you were here. Nice. Yeah, let's get to the real is level now. Come on, guys. Okay, the Earth is obviously unobservably flat, Arwin. There you go. That's the really is level. Are there any ballers? There must be some ballers in Discord. Oh, we had some ballers in there yesterday after the show. Mark the twat. Oh, yeah. Oh, Riley. Oh, gosh, Riley. Oh, such a liar. Oh, why can't we see you the whole of the island? <laughs> Everybody's got Mark Taylor's accent. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, so I hear it's like the, the after show will end and obviously when it's not being recorded anymore, they pile in on mass and, and have their little chit chats. But while the shows are actually running live or recorded afterwards, they're not so keen. Yeah, Jim, yeah. Jim Panda, I think, has a sock account in there. Jim Panda, it's been six weeks. We're still waiting for this. Jim Panda, a.k.a. Gimp Panda. This is what we need. We need the natural experiments for bird humping. Okay? The, you have to give us the experiment. Now, I know you don't know what that means, but go find that. Go ask Pontiff Maximus of Retardia and the rest of those clowns and put together the natural experiment of bird humping because that's what you claimed. Now, support your claim. Okay? Thanks. I, I think I can help out there. You just put yeah, a female and a male bird in a cage during the right season. And you got your birds humping. Okay. So the natural phenomena is birds humping. So mm -hmm. next yeah. <coughs> Okay. What's what's next your independent in there. What's your independent variable, Arwin? Uh birds humping? The cause of birds humping is birds humping. Cause of shoe is shoe, right? Well, right. If the birds hadn't, if the previous generation of birds hadn't humped, then they wouldn't be humping now. So technically, that is correct. So your independent nice variable is if previous generation of birds humping, then birds humping. Yes. Okay. What's your null? Hmm. Well, if previous generation of birds would have been sterile then this generation of birds would not be humping. Okay. Without the use of a time machine, how are you going to vary that? Uh, I don't know. I guess you'd have to be a na natural observer and keep track of a specific uh, family of birds. Maybe tag them. Maybe even uh, sedate them and check if they're, uh, yeah, if they are sterile or not or whatever. I don't know. This way got way out of hand. It, it was kind of a joke, actually. So. <laughs> we know, Arwin. We know. But I took it way too seriously by accident. That's okay. It's always good to descend things into the level of farce when they are <laughs> farcical. Speaking of farce, real quick, um, Brenda against the 10 year old. Oh, um, what did she say? Um, he mentioned the table. 
and they were talking about the cause, and she said wood is the cause of table. Sorry, she like, gave a okay. concrete noun of table, but previously on this very show, she made it clear that a table, unlike a shoe, was actually a concrete noun. So she's then later gone on to claim that a table is a phenomena, and the cause of said yeah. phenomena is wood. My God, she's yes. retarded. <laughs> yes, and that this was against the 10-year-old, or 12, or whatever. Yeah, I was talking about yeah. this before. Uh, she got she train-wrecked herself, but that's not the point. I mean, she's a belly laughing joke. We already know that. It is the. I think I said it was a ten year old, but he's actually twelve. You need to watch this video. I I was gobsmacked. Where do you listen to this kid? You're good. It's shocking. <laughs> Where do you see it? Is that video yeah. posted? Is he good? I haven't seen it. Is he really this good? Oh my god! Else, I'll give it to him. Hmm, maybe I have to watch that. It called. Oh, is you the... have to watch it. Is it my, called? I, I, I let my wife listen. She only listened to three minutes of the first part, and her face turned almost white. <laughs> is it really I'll that bad? Let me check it out. No, no, it's not that bad. He is just. I don't know how to describe him. It's like it, there's a 25 year old mind and a 12 year old kid. Just listen mm. to his vocabulary. He's I, in the zone. I've just He's posted the, the link for the live chat, so I've just posted three links to that if you want to go and check it out. What what channel was it on, just out of interest? Modern uh, Day Debate. Modern Day yeah. Debate. Check them out, like, comment, sh share, yeah, with subscribe, a, with all that a, stuff. With a stripe in between the modern and the day. Let them know where you got the link. <laughs> I'll post it in... Uh, where shall I post it? I've just posted it. I've posted it to live chat and I'm saying when you go and watch, obviously like, comment, share, subscribe, but also let them know where you got the link. Just a shameless plug for my own show. Don't worry about it, Arwin. It wasn't that important. <laughs> so are we going to hear any more? So, uh, Does this kid have his own channel or anything or was this a first appearance? I, I don't know him. I, that's the first time I've seen him. I, I was like I said, if you're not gobsmacked by this kid, I I, I don't know what to tell you. Y you will be. It, it it'll shock you. <laughs> you will be. I will. I'll check it out. You will be. Hopefully, so will some of the people in the audience. Let us know in the comments. So, section. if I may, it's not it's not just that Brent is so stupid, even though <laughs> she is, but uh, it's just that he's really well spoken. Eh? Yeah. Twelve year old kid so brought up the coach and specker theorem. I'm gonna near fell off my chair. He brought up the what? <laughs> he brought up the what? <laughs> coach and specker theorem? That Never we heard went of it. over it with quantum mechanics? No, no, totally new to me. No, it's not new to you. We've we've covered it a couple times. It was the part of the the free will and the free choice and the contextualization of our reality. Even with a reminder, I still don't know. I definitely couldn't articulate this in debate. Let's put it that way. So kudos to the 12-year-old. <laughs> Even oh, with a reminder, yeah. I don't he, know what you're talking about. Yeah. He was talking yeah, about the history of calculus. <laughs> yeah, you brought up Heisenberg, uncertainty principles. I, uh, the, what's the Hilbert Hotel? What, the what Hilbert was that, Hotel, John? yeah, he brought that up. It, he started talking about infinite regression. They started yeah, talking about logical <laughs> abstracts and metaphysical abstracts and metaphysical logic. And, and listen, some of the stuff he's just parroting, uh, that's obvious. And a lot of the stuff that he said was clearly wrong, but he just needs a helping hand. I'll tell you what, if anyone can get in contact with him, all I need is about 30 minutes with this kid and uh... it's over. It's over because we're gonna unleash him. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah he's well, just a little bit like too you young for him. your type of conditioning, John. He's just a nah, couple he... steps away. He just got to get his arguments. He's got to connect them, right? Contra he's just a couple yeah. steps away. So if anyone knows this, Gregory, try to get his email or contact information, please. Go on, Travis. Was it Travis? What's that? I thought you were trying to get a word in. Sorry? I thought you were trying to get a word in. Oh, I was just saying it sounds like John wants to adopt him. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to lie. This kid was damn smart. 
I was listening to him. This first thing I heard when I woke up, because John posted the link, and I was just like, Brenda's debating a 10-year-old? Okay, let me check this out. And, pff, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't know half of what the kid was saying. <laughs> just to be honest with you. Like, it was that crazy. He probably just started reading up on all of this and really absorbed all of it and got really, like, in yeah. love with the material. And there Is was some, like, be? A, yeah, I just posted it in Master B. Yeah, go ahead and check and it good. out. We'll talk about it tomorrow if you guys haven't seen it. And <laughs> I yeah. can't wait. Speaking of tomorrow, if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980, tomorrow will be Ballbusters. So that's 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. UK, and we're covering Flat Earth Proofs. So this time now on Nathan Oakley 1980 being Friday, um, tomorrow will be Ballbusters for the live audience. It's Thursday, and it will be on Saturday, two days from now, obviously. Are be you here manipulating or be time? Be here or be sphere. Are you manipulating time again? I am manipulating time. Oh, so you're going to premiere it, not live stream it? or? Ballbusters will be live on Saturday. So uh, I've recently made a change to the schedule. So I will go through this now with the live audience because it will go out to both Nathan Oakley and the Nathan Oakley 1980 audience in the aftermath. But ultimately speaking, the shows are now much more simple. There will always be a live show put out at 2 o'clock every single day. And there will always be an uncut and after show at 10 p.m. UK time every single day. The only caveat being you've got to subscribe to both Nathan Oakley and Nathan Oakley 1980 channel. So providing you are subscribed to both Nathan Oakley and Nathan Oakley 1980 channel, there will always be a live show at 2 and there will always be an uncut and after show 7 days a week at 10pm. Copy that. Roger, over. What's your vector, Victor? Surely you know what my serious. favorite I'm always serious. And don't call me five. sure. Ian asked to post a link to the Brenda debate. I did post it earlier, but there you go again if you want it in the chat. It's now in the live chat. Oh, that's right. And Jeffrey, Bay, Jeffrey Bill in chat helped me to remind me that I should remind everyone that my show, the Flatters Early Bird Show, starts one hour before that every day, and it'll always be live. You know, Owen, you had a you get more, hold on, chocolate. You, you hold on, chocolate. Hold on, it. hold on. You need to be more specific. So, one p.m. UK time, two p.m. Amsterdam time. Flat Earth Early Bird. So it runs on A R W I J N channel, R W I N channel. One hour before each of the live debates. The live debates being two p.m. daily. The Flat Earth Early Bird being 1 p.m. UK time daily. Be there or be sphere. <laughs> Shout out to John. Any more plugs? Shameless plugs before I round out the live show? Stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980. Uh, just oh, a Reddit. Anon was first going on. Just a Reddit. Uh, if you go, if you're fancy Reddit, then go to Reddit slash r slash. Not a globe. Any more? Got time for one more? Any more for any more? I was going to say, uh, Arwen had a pretty good convo with uh, Red Pill Philosophy this morning, so yeah. everyone should check that out. It was awesome. I'm surprised he didn't bring it up, Arwen. I got uh, your back, though. <laughs> yeah, th it was a good conversation today on the debates as well. I didn't really want to... I kind of almost forgot about it. <laughs> But yeah, it was awesome. It was really great. The energy was very thick. I was hyped up. And we we really back and forth in some really complex stuff. It was awesome. And I yeah, I, he said he would be on uh, again uh, in the in the future and I really hope he will because it was really cool. So do take a look at today's Flat Earth Early Bird number 220. The 21. Sorry. Excellent. So yes, definitely check out Flat Earth Early Bird on the Arwin channel. And I'll say once more, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did join us live. And of course, a massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this debate possible. If you need to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate community, then go to nathanoakley.com and check out 
about the Flat Earth debate forum which you should definitely join i've been nathan oakley stay tuned if you're watching on nathan oakley 1980 and i'll see you all in the next video oh what a day what a lovely day Yeah, and I got uh, reined in with Super Chats as well, so there was also accompanying that. That's good, man. Yeah, you deserve them. Today. Huh? I said it's good, man. You deserve them. Thanks. Thanks. You deserve those Super Chats, man. Absolutely. What's that you say? Super Chats? Did you do well on Super Chats or something today, are we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, James Mays dropped like twenty dollars on me, and uh, the other guy that sponsored me the other day did it again. Excellent. So, well, yeah, people nice. appreciate a good conversation, man. All right. Issue is you gotta have somebody on to have a good conversation with, though, because <laughs> I could technically get Brenda on the show every time, but yeah. I think I'd probably get depressed pretty quickly. <laughs> this friend is so fucking stupid, man. Oh my gosh. But she's also. I, I really, really can't believe she continues devious. to come back. I'm sorry, the go ahead. With, uh, the issue with Brenda is she's not just stupid, she is stupid. But she's also nefariously devious. She literally tries to uh, confuse things on purpose. A very persistent and very yeah. She's there to waste time. She's a careful bluffer at it, but it's nefarious. It's kind of she's sociopathic. A, she's a way she doofus. She's a doofus. <laughs> I wanted to check with you guys about. Uh, I wanted to bring something up on the show, but I wanted to see if it had already been brought up before. And it, I'm I'm not a glober, but it's evidence proposed by a glober recently on Nathan Thompson's uh, official flat Earth forum on Facebook. Um, and it was one of the uh, weather balloon footage. Uh, it was screenshots taken from it, and since the uh, since the weather balloon was shot with a GoPro, it took four screenshots. So one was uh, one was curved, then one was concave, then one was uh, flat, hmm. and then the next screenshot was them taking stopping the frame at where the the horizon line is at the center point of the picture. Which is supposedly where the fisheye lens is not uh, is not present, or the effect of the fisheye lens isn't present when the horizon's at the middle of the screen, and it was curved. And they said, "Okay, that's evidence of curvature." And I wanted to run that by you guys because I wanted to bring it up, but I didn't want to bring it up until yeah. I'd already addressed it. Oh, oh, I, I, so I have response if nobody else does. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, I, if no one else does, I, I will. I'm just curious. So the still shot was taken from the same video in which you saw it concave and convex and all curving and all that. Yes. So this was in so the it same was, video. So it was a video, kind of like the ones you see on documentaries or you know, Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, things like that. Um, I think it was from Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, his video on YouTube. I think it was that one. It might be from a different channel, but it was one of them. I know that, one of the high-altitude uh, weather balloons um, with a GoPro on it. And the GoPro has that the fisheye lens. So they said that the correction of it was wait till the horizon is in the, at the very center of the screen. Um, and yeah, the, it was all taken from the same video and the last screenshot was showing that 
where the horizon was and it would wait because since it was a weather balloon, the camera would move up and down because it was, you know, in the air, it was moving through the air so that the camera would move up and down and it would show the curve and convex. And then they stopped it at the center of the screen and it showed a curve. And I was like, that's interesting, but what exa- like, what's the weight of that evidence? Is that maybe just another effect of the camera, the GoPro camera and, Maybe it's maybe it compresses at the sides. I don't know because I don't know that much about uh, photography and cameras. So I was going to run that by you guys because I saw it in there. I didn't see Nathan Thompson comment on it at the time, but I was like, "Have y'all ever addressed something like that?" Because I've seen that a couple times. Yeah, you lose me right at Fish Islands. That's how I would. That's how I would respond. Fish eye lens. Yeah, just get so, a rectilinear lens. The lens itself lens. is is curved. So, um, the fact that it can show you flat would be, uh, you know, it would bolster enough of a uh, a solid foundation to argue upon. But uh, I wouldn't pull it out of my pocket for evidence. Right, so it was used as evidence for the flat Earth, and that's why they brought it up because they said, "Okay, maybe you guys don't use it, but yeah. so people in people that were same using video, it I as could have evidence. taken a still shot out of it and pro- use that as proof of concave." No, no, no. So right, right. Well, yes, yes, concave curvature. Yeah. There you go. So it's bullshit. Ding, 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 ding. Nathan, what say you? Sorry, me what? To what? I just said, Nathan, what say you? Uh, to, to what? <laughs> I don't know what the question is, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh sorry. he's claiming. Oh, you go I'm ahead. Not, well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not claiming. I'm they off, were... guys, so see ya. See you around. See you later. later. Okay. I'm not, I'm not claiming. I'm bringing it up because I wanted to see if y'all had addressed it before, so I didn't just bring up something that had already been addressed. But so they said that it it's, it cor- it corrects at the center. So what I'm asking is, what is the weight of that evidence for curvature, and is that even true that that's an effect of the camera that you can you can get? But at the same time, like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So is that what is the weight of that evidence? I'm not. Well, I, I'm not getting the argument here. Can somebody translate that for me? Yeah, I think I can what he's translate. saying is a glober. A glober used. Okay, uh, uh, what do you call it? High altitude balloon footage, one which uh, is fluctuating with the GoPro, so you can see a concave, you can see a flat, you can see a curve. And at one point, when it was flat, somebody took a still shot. And is trying to use that because apparently that still shot showed curvature when it was supposed to be flat, and is using that as proof of curvature. I think I got that right, right? <laughs> not, not entirely. So no, okay. They, were, they were saying sense. with a GoPro, if you wait till the object you want to see, i.e., the horizon, is at the very center of the screen or the very center of the uh, of the camera shot. Then you see it corrected, so the fisheye lens effect is not present when the object is at the center of the shot. So yeah, that... they took four. They took four still shots: one concave, one convex. Or um, yeah, one concave, one convex, and uh, one flat. And then the last screenshot was it at the center, and it showed it slightly curved. That's what I was asking. What would the weight of that evidence be? That's not evidence, and you're still dealing with lenses, and you're still going to get barrel distortion, so it's just a sight gag. Okay, what's barrel distortion? I haven't heard that before. Barrel distortion happens because the lens, all lenses are imperfect, and on the edges, you're going to get distortion, right? You could try to fix it. I'm not a photographer, so... To get the technical white paper language, go find a, a actual professional photographer. He'll tell you. But essentially, you're going to get distortion on the edges, 
right? So it's not proof. It's not scientific evidence. It's just a sight gag. All right, I got for like I guess any of you guys. All right. Uh, so yeah, he says it's a sight I mean, gag. What 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 if you get the like the horizon right curved at the center of the uh of the picture right below the center and then above the center and that curve. Okay, I I, is, I, I don't know why yeah, you keep bringing up a, rec a, a fisheye lens. There are plenty of high altitude balloon footage, one hundred seventeen. Thousand feet with a rectilinear lens, well, as rectilinear as it gets, where the the lines are not bowed out towards the edge, and you can see there's no there's no fucking curve. There's plenty of those videos, so I don't know why we're All sitting right. here yeah. dissecting frame by frame of a video taken by a fisheye. It's just a fool's errand. I've done enough skateboarding and snowboarding videos with a fisheye to know just don't you don't look at react. Fisheye is not reality; it bends yeah. it completely. Amen. So just so yeah. What, what if what if right, without fish eye fish eye lens? What if what if without fish eye lens, at the center, below the center, and above the center, that curve stays the same? Well, I, I, sh I if you want, do you want a link? I can send you a link that has a as as rectilinear as it gets that I've seen, and there's no curve. Okay, I can send you Once a link. Yet? All right, where I've seen a curve. Um, okay, you you just but... said it was fish eye. No, I, I, I said it wasn't fish eye. I said without fish eye. Okay. I thought right. you were talking you want, about fish eye. Or... Well, okay. I, I, I was talking about fish eye lens because I, I saw yeah. it. Oh, someone bad. posted it on Nathan Thompson's channel. Well, now we have a claim with uh, curvature. So, yeah, let's uh, let's see it. Can you post it in the chat? I will. Uh, but before I do, though, I, I want to just I want to see what you guys what your question like what 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 uh. What counts? Like what works? So yeah, if if that curvature stays, if, if it's not fisheye, right, and the curvature curvature stays the same at the center and below the center and then above it, above the center, is that is that decent evidence or or no? What did you listen? Are you to able my to specify the type of Hold curvature on. you're talking about? Hold on a second. Uh, Sorry. Did did you listen to my explanation just two minutes ago? What was your explanation? It's just a sight gag. There are no perfect lenses. You're going to get distortion. You can correct it in in Photoshop, but there's some techniques to correct it. But it's you're still you're you can't get a perfect lens. It's a sight gag, and okay. you got problems right. with Neil Smoke and DeGrasse Tyson, who said at 128,000 feet that shit's flat. Okay. Yeah, so what that. if I <laughs> went even further? What if I one upped my uh? My uh, my uh, what do you call it? You're not. What if I went even further? Okay. So, but you're no, not. What, what if? Okay. So besides it, besides the curve being at the center, below the center and above the center, what happens now if that camera is rotated 180 degrees? Now it's flipped upside down, and that curve still stays with the Earth. <laughs> Where? Okay, do it. Go ahead. You guys can go at them. I'm I'm pretty okay, much. Okay. Why done. don't you take a balloon that goes to 130,000 and then flip it 180? Go ahead. Yeah, I actually saw a video where it actually flipped because it was like look, okay. it was lifting up and the balloon popped and then it started rotating around. And you, there's a shot where when it's upside down, that curve is still with the Earth. <laughs> if, if, that, if that curve was just a sight gag or whatever you want to call it, uh, then technically, if it's upside Show down, me. that curve should be concave. But it's not. <laughs> I always see every time the balloon pops and it starts hurtling down towards Earth due to relative density. Every time the Earth, when it's upside down, the Earth looks concave every time. Not, so... not, not the video I've seen. The video, the video I've no. seen, uh, okay. it's days with the Earth. Show me. All right, give me a second. Paste it on Discord and the time frame. Yeah, I mean, is he? Is he talking about y coordinate or y curvature or z curvature? What axis is he talking about here? X Sounds curvature. like he's talking about y. X. So I, what I want to see, yeah, is I want to see an upside down where the Earth is on the top side of the frame and has a curvature of of convex, uh, uh, concave. You're talking about left Sorry, to right. Convex, not concave. Yes, x curvature is what he's talking about. That's all you're looking at here. I'm sorry, x-axis, because there is no curvature. 
Oh, pardon me. Yeah, I think oh, I yeah, said just give me a second. <laughs> it's actually, believe it or not, uh, like a flat earth video too. It's a, it's a flat earther um, who uh, did the the. It's like a hundred. I think a hundred. And... I want to say 120. It was like more or less almost 20 miles up. But let me see if I can find that real fast. Give me a second. So are you arguing... For curvature, or are you just presenting evidence of uh, possible curvature? Yeah, sure, possible curvature. Yes, let's go with that. Oh, where are you going to paste this in Discord? Yeah, probably. Maybe the live stream if that's allowed. Should be allowed, right? It's not live. Yeah, it's allowed. Just... Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm in the live stream but if Discord. We're not live. Yeah, but that's okay. He can still post it in the live stream. So what, you glow over, you on the fence? What are you? Oh, me? Oh, uh, I'm glow over, uh, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, in this, in this, uh, in the server, though, because I know, uh, I don't know. You're automatically a glow over in the server until you get it changed. It's uh, what you call home field advantage for the glow -overs. They need all the help they can get. Over. What's your sure. name? What's, what's his name? What's his name? Wait, whose name? What? The one that's providing this uh, upside down shake and bake picture. I don't remember, but it was a. Our he was. It was a, it was a. It was a. Oh wait. Oh wait. Me or or the video? The people. Yeah. Who's, uh, you. You. Oh, our matter. Yeah. Okay. Radius matters. I can't quite find it, but uh, I don't, maybe you guys know it's like a it's like a family. Yeah. Um, they're they're like flat earthers, and like this guy does it like he does it a lot. He does like a, I think it's is it launches? I, I forget. Uh, no, it's not launches. It's uh, it's just yeah, the, the balloon, whatever. He does this a bunch of times. He does he does this a whole lot. Like he he just like. Could it could it be remember. Dwayne Kellum? You know what's funny? Chance? I know he does you know a lot. What's funny is in the past two days, I've had. Glovers use evidence from flat earthers to prove a globe instead of their own evidence that they <laughs> hold true to have the very position that they claim. Well, because sorry be if I stepped on anybody there. Well, because like the thing is, like Glovers, right? We already believe in a globe. So, so the thing is, we don't, we're not going to go out of our way, you know, to try to prove it. But flat earthers, though, they try to, you know, they, they're trying to debunk it. So they're actually, you know, doing those tests, whatever, and we just yeah. But the we have the but, flat know. earthers want to know what evidence there is to substantiate the belief that the world is not as we experience it to be. You understand? Wait, yeah. Did, did you think? And that flat we just want scientific would... evidence. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask, do you think that flat earthers were just born believing that it's flat? Oh, no, of not, not. taught the same way that you guys were, right? Yeah. Right. Sorry, I just got back. Did he post it in here? But if I could just... <laughs> not yet, not yet. I'm still looking for it. Uh, it was easier to search. I, I guess maybe ever since YouTube did that thing, I, I can't find it, but it was easier to search a while back, though. I just literally typed in like 100,000 miles <laughs> up. YouTube did what That's thing? That's fascinating. Hold on, what did YouTube do? Oh dear. Our matter. Uh, Somebody's asking you a question. What did YouTube do? You said since YouTube did that thing. Oh, I was saying, yeah, YouTube like censored like Flat Earth or whatever. It's oh, fucked up. Oh, that's sad. That sucks, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, mm. but yeah, it's kind of mm. annoying because I'm oh, yeah. trying to find the video and it makes it's making it harder now. Fascinating. Why would they do such a thing? 
I don't know. Yeah. I'm, oh, you I don't mean, know personally. You're I stupid. Oh no, it's it's. Uh... Hold on, you can't ask him that. He's not going to know motivation, is he? We are know the no, we all no, know no, the no, motivation. Just... They actually came out in black and white and said what the motivation was. They said they're going to censor. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> we're not. We're not. Um, you know, guessing or, you know, assuming. Well, he said he was a clover. He can't find the video. Is there is there anything else that that he has that led him to believe that the Earth is a globe? Thank you, John. Uh, I don't I don't know if you were there for the other stuff, but I I uh, for like the other call, it was like uh, I mean the other day or whatever. I was just saying like yeah, it's it's more or less yeah a belief whatever, but uh, like a lot of it a lot of it to me just you know just for me at least it just seems you know like believable like you know like when i see like like i know a lot of you guys yeah uh, when i was like, a kid you know, when i was in my 20s i i definitely bought into this bullshit yeah but when you when you get a little older like like well, how i am like 40 years old then then the, uh-huh. you start smelling bullshit but yeah but when i was your age i was all up in um stephen hawking reading brief history of time when i was 19 so yeah i was all up in it so you got some time buddy you got some go time. ahead let him speak. Go, let, internet, go, let, hold on a second go ahead let him speak i mean i'm not I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> pigeonhole you. I'm not going to try to beat you over the head or anything. I'm just interested in what, what is the actual substance I call cowbell that leads you to believe that the Earth is a globe, that we live in the heliocentric quote unquote model. What is that? I mean, do you have any have any cowbell? Well, like like I said, it's it's really just a like a belief for me. Like like yeah, I can't truly prove it to myself, but like you know, like a lot of it, it's just hard to like, like for me when I see the moon, like I like you know, this is like you know, obviously a lot of globers when they when I see the moon, though, I, I can't I can't not see, you know, like a giant rock ball in the sky. You know, it's just really hard for me to believe it's not. So for me, it's just it's for me to believe a flat Earth. You ha- I have to like really like, you know. I have to believe that that moon isn't like really like physical. It could be anything, you know, I have to believe a lot of, you know, stuff that doesn't seem, you know, natural for me, at least, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just me though. You know, not everyone, you know, it's the same, whatever, but, uh, yeah, it's a belief if you want to call it that, okay. but I, you know, at the same time, I, so I guess the moon. So being what a ball. Yeah. Okay. And it's like a, and it's like that a rock. That makes the Earth that well, you're standing on. Well, no, it it, ju- it just it makes it easier to believe. Like if there's a rock ball up there that you know that so and, let's and say the you're... fact that it's up there, you know, floating and not falling, you know, uh, quote unquote ball, uh, floating. It's just easy for so me to me, believe that. Let yeah, me, ex- you know, it could be a it could be a ball. It could be, you know, not. Let me let me do something. Is. You you live in a house huh? and you have a chandelier and that chandelier looks like a giant pyramid. Then you conclude that your house. Is a giant pyramid. No, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's no. Um, no. I I use I'm using the moon. Uh, essentially, yeah. I have to I have to believe in like yeah, all you know all that science and about the Earth being round. I'm just saying that the moon being round itself is. I think it, it like helps me. You know, it, it helps the whole. So you're saying you know, the moon is a sphere. Thing. It helps. Hold it. on a second. Hold on a second. So you're saying the moon is it looks like a sphere. Yeah. I, you can't see depth with celestial objects. Uh, but, uh, that might be true. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt here. But so Go what? E- even if it's conceded, okay, the moon is a sphere. Oh, for the sake of this argument, just concede it. So what? What does that prove? Yeah. No, it doesn't prove anything. Like like I said, it, it, the moon for me just, it helps with the, if you want to call it the, the, the ball earth, you know, uh, not the theory, Brain but washing. the ball are thing, you know, the whole, yeah, that whole thing. So it, it helps at least. I, I, I'm not saying it proves it, just helps it. Okay, how does it it's, help it? Because the whole thing with ball, you know, with the ball if is that you need gravity, right? And so when you have, you know, a giant ball, right. rock ball up there, right? You know, floating, right. you know, not floating, but, you know, going about, you know, you know, you got orbits and stuff. That, that helps the whole gravity situation because the fact that it's up there not falling, uh, Gravity is not a situation. Hold on a second, then. Orbits is falling, though. First and foremost, the presupposition of orbits is is falling. That's that's the first thing. Yeah, 
But you, you, so you're holding a contradiction. No, it's a fact that it's hold, a hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. You're holding a contradiction. <laughs> so you're saying the fact that it's up there floating means it's not falling, and that helps. I don't know why oh. you didn't explain that. But then you went on to say, oh. but it, it, but it's orbits. But orbits presupposes it's it's falling around a sphere Earth. So none of this actually links back to a sphere Earth, other than inserting a dozen more presuppositions. I, I guess. I don't know. It's just. Like I said, like, like I said, it's a belief. Like I'm not gonna say it's, you know, it's yeah. Like a moon proves the Earth. Or whatever. I, I, I kind of you know, get what you're saying, right? You're saying that because you've been, I don't want to say program, but you know, because you've learned that what we look at and we call the moon is a giant rock that's orbiting the Earth, and you know they've put pictures in your mind, to, you know, with a moon buggy and people walking around on it, it makes it easier for you to look at what you're standing on as kind of the same thing, a giant rock. Even though there's really no correlation between that, but because they've told you that, it makes it a little bit more, a, a little bit easier to swallow that you're standing on what that is to something like that, right? I, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, Maybe I don't know. I just sure. I'm still looking for this video. I don't know where the hell this is. I, I think there's a bunch of videos like this though. It's just I think once you get like around twenty miles, twenty miles up, then it's it's like and as long as it's not using a GoPro, it's a lot of the videos do that. But anyway, uh, hope you guys don't mind me taking as long as I am to find this video. No, take your time. We're I'm more interested in the other things that it led you to. Uh, your adopt, let's say, adoption of the narrative. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Let's see where the fuck is. And I totally agree with the other uh, members of the board were saying concerning, you know, if if the things you're looking out there at the celestial bodies are balls, then what I'm standing on is a ball. That's logically unsound by itself. But I could see where it would lend credence to the uh premise that what you're standing on is a ball i could see it uh, there's a there's a tether i got that part yeah sure <laughs> but, the, but that tethers yeah. d delivered yeah, through a particular thing. conduit though isn't it that there's only one means of receiving that information yes yeah Presup. yeah yeah you have to be conditioned with the presupposition first Right, it's still logically unsound, though. Do you, are you following why why it's logically unsound to look at something uh, in the sky and state that that's what you're standing on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, okay. that's yeah. But, yeah. but you but you whistle past it. So uh, Anon made the example. He said, if you're looking at a chandelier, now by chandelier he means light on the ceiling, and what you're doing is looking at a light on the sky ceiling, if you will. So there, it's it's analogous, and then then he said, well, if you look at the light, and it's pyramid shaped on your ceiling, and you're saying I look at the light on the ceiling of the sky, and it's spherical, then that means that the ground I stand on is spherical. Likewise, because the chandelier is pyramid shaped, the house must be pyramid shaped. It's the same. But you you said no to that when I made yep. that example. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not concluding that the Earth is round because the specifically because the moon is round i'm i'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm i believe that the earth is round because yeah there's the whole story you know there's the if you want to call it that you know the whole you know the whatever like the the the, the, the earth the moon being round just sort of uh just helps yeah. that story I don't you know, even know. Help, it helps yeah the watch the round thing. part yeah watch the round part because th then it starts to get confusing because pizzas are round and flat lps are round yeah. and flat you see what I'm saying? You got to be hyper specific in your in in the language that you use. What's an LP? Yeah, a record. La latest production. A record. Never heard of it. Must be some some old timey thing. A record. <laughs> you nope, know, nah. album. I'm just messing you know? with you. <laughs> oh God! I t you're trolling me, and I didn't even catch it. Okay. Versus EP. Is there anything else besides the moon? Uh, I mean, not really a whole lot. It's just, I don't know. There's also, there's also like, uh, I don't know. There's also, I, I know this is a bad, you know, argument, whatever, but there's the whole, 
you know, all the uh, all the bad. I mean, there was there are some good flat Earth arguments, but there's also some bad ones. And the bad ones that I've come across, that's sort of just, you know, made it hard for me to become a flat Earth. And so it that's that's sort of can you can you why. say okay which which is one of the best? Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of them too. You're right. Uh, which can you give us an example? So uh, I remember when uh, when I was first finding out about flat earth when it was becoming like a when it was becoming like really like big whatever i joined uh, 24 7 and one of the arguments was uh you know was a transparent moon in the morning uh for me if it, it was just the, it was just atmosphere you know you have uh, mountains in the distance you know the farther they are the more transparent they become you know what i'm saying so that for me the whole transparent moon argument just didn't seem legit and that was just i was just kind of like okay that's not really convincing for me at least i, I so i've was, seen that I've seen that a long. That was a long time ago, too, man. That was one of the first things I've seen, and I, I don't know if I have a picture of stars through the moon. I probably got rid of them because it was so long ago. I don't know if it was an argument. It was just that's what it showed. Yeah, I've never looked through a mountain and seen something on the other side, so I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, I mean, yeah. If they showed, if they showed, like, yeah, maybe a star behind it, then yeah. But I mean, a lot of the times. I, they've always there's always been like a still picture though they never actually had footage of a star behind a moon if you know what i'm saying so i mean that never uh, yeah. really convinced me I'm, I'm sorry to do this to you both again this is the second time i've done this to you. please don't hate me john again no go uh, uh, right i appreciate this is the contra country contrary argument from the flat earth side that's left you unconvinced of a flat plane but again even if i concede okay the moon is not transparent so what? What does this prove, or in this case, disprove, about the land we dwell atop? No, oh, doesn't. And it doesn't do anything. I just need. I just need to be convinced. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna, you know, switch sides. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I'm not convinced enough. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, but yeah. You I, 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 sorry. Sorry. Just like, one more thing. Just one more thing. There's the problem. So, you, when you say the word convinced, and mm -hmm. you detail off other people's argument. It seems that, no offense, you want the argument to be given to you as opposed to you looking into it and deciding for yourself. That's just how it comes across to me. Oh, I mean, I guess I've looked into it myself, I guess. Uh, but yeah, not as much as I've, yeah, been in a flatter server and had arguments come to me. So I, I guess, uh, yeah, there is a bit of that where I'm just sort of, yeah, having it come to me instead of actually doing the research myself. But I mean, I've still got a lot of, you know, a lot of info um, from the whole Flat Earth uh, servers. Like, I know there's a lot of uh, tests. I know there was the whole, what was it called? Uh, flat Earth, the Flat Earth Core. I've seen that, that whole, uh, with the water, like the water thing and then the lasers and shit. I've seen that. Uh, that was, uh, I guess, pretty all right. Uh, there's other tests too. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, like. How much time would you say you've uh, been looking into it? Uh, let me see. What was been looking into it ever since I joined that first uh, server, which was probably a year, maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half. I've been sort of just debating ever since. I don't know. <laughs> All right, get to something specific. We, we this is all about the moon, right? Is there something other than the celestial bodies that have led you to adopt the narrative? Uh, I guess there's the whole, you know, um, you know, boats over the curve. I know flat earthers have the whole um, either uh, there's either diffraction or there's the uh, perspective where things, uh, what do you call it? Um, angular. This, this, I forgot what it's called, but apparently, like things sort of blend as they get further and further away. So that was one of the arguments. It was the, it was the angular thingy. And then there was a refraction. So there's, I know there's a few good, you know, a few good arguments on the other side. Um, but like I said, I, I think, uh, you know, it just being a physical obstruction, you know, an actual curve that also, at least for me, it works. Um, I don't see how it doesn't. Uh, so there's, there's that, I guess. What works? The, like it actually being a physical curve that boats are going over. It could be, yeah, it could also be refraction too, but, uh, from what I've seen, though, you know, it could easily also just be, you know, a physical curve, though. Like, there's no, you know, it doesn't really not work with the curve, physical curve. 
Like I've seen both sides or whatever. It's just like I said, it's it's I'm gonna need a little more. I don't know. You need a little more <laughs> to show you that it's not a curb? Yeah, a little more. Cause I mean like Yeah. Cause I don't have know. Have you seen Randy's work? Maybe I might have. I, I Randy Flatters. Uh, I might have to check that because I because I, I don't really remember names well. So I, don't mind if I, I can, I can post a picture. Act. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I could post a, a oh, picture of Branty's work and the live stream. And this is a a view from eighteen miles. Wait one second. Eighteen miles. Okay. Yeah, eighteen miles at one foot elevation. Hold on. Just wait one. And it's shore to shore at 18 miles. And let me put that in live stream. Wait one. Okay. I'm going to upload it now. The top half of the picture that you're going to see is from 18 miles at one foot elevation. All right. And the bottom part of that picture is at 32 feet elevation. Same pick. Oh, that one. Let me see. Let me give you the original pick of the 18 mile one, too. All right. <laughs> Uh, wait. What am I looking at here? I see there's like a cop. Not. Oh wait. Oh wait. The top. Which one is the top one? Is that the? You said eighteen. Yeah, that's. Mi- 18 I, I'll put the original one. Here's the original one right beneath it. That's eighteen miles, one foot elevation, shore to shore. All right. Let's see. One foot. In fact, Ranty said it was below one foot, but you get the you get the picture. No pun intended. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but it does look like the 18 mile one. There's some sort of uh, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot the term, but it looks like it's stretched almost. I think there's like you see how the tower in the in the bottom, like the first picture you sent. How you had the yeah the one on top and then one on bottom, that tower that little uh, not tower that little building to the left, with like the two windows or something, it's sort of like there's like I don't know hold on let me just real fast yeah yeah there's a mirage there but we're beneath the miraging layer I'm talking about the beach to beach, beach to beach. Yeah, don't uh, worry about the buildings just yet. You're you are correct. What happened was Ranty got underneath. The miraging layer, it was higher than his elevation that he uh, shot at at less than one foot. You see where I'm going with this? The bottom, the, the first picture I posted had two different pictures on it. I just wanted to get a good look at what the beach looked like for the photo beneath it. Because oh, you okay. could see yeah. that there's, you could see beach in mm-hmm. the original photo. Oh, yeah, that's true. You see what, that's what I'm saying. Sorry, I didn't state that at first and got a little confused. All right. I'll have to shore up this little argument a little bit better, I think. Or do you appreciate the point he's making by showing you that from one foot up, one foot elevation, you can see the other beach at 18 miles away? That's yeah, not actually true, you, sorry. Uh, the buildings are 18 miles, wait, the hold... beach is closer, sorry. Okay. 
Yeah, the beach, I think the beach you said was 13 miles. I'm sorry about that too. I didn't mean, yeah. The buildings are 18 miles, but the beach is 13 miles away. Oh, okay. Uh, and the first picture, right? The one that with one, one without the mirage ish, right? One without the mirage. Uh, Just look at the bottom have, yeah. picture of the last picture I posted. That's the original pick. Okay. Beach to beach. Oh, uh, huh, okay. My question is still on the table. Do you appreciate the point, though? Yeah. And what's his point then? Just tell us. That I guess, I guess the beach shouldn't be showing from that distance. Is that the no, point? No, that's not or definitely not his wrong? point. Why would? Uh, why yeah. would <laughs> hold on, hold on. Why would anybody say something shouldn't be showing? It's a photograph. There it is. It's just there. Nobody's saying anything yeah. shouldn't be there. It is there. Oh, he's saying that oh, probably because if it's on a flat earth, then it makes sense, I guess. What do you mean it makes sense? It's just a picture. What's to make sense of it? I don't understand why you'd assert that either. No, he, he's not asserting that it, sh it makes sense. It's just a photograph. It is what it is. Yeah. So, his point being... All right, that is... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> So 13 miles away. Okay. Yeah, I got it now. All right. So his point is. Actually, I have no idea. What, what was your point? I don't know. I thought I thought the point was just to show that, like, you know, like the, the distances and how maybe it might not match up on a ball or something. I, I thought that was the point, but I'm like, I'm clearly not getting it. Well, I yeah, get that the yeah, yeah. yeah. You, what you're saying is your cognitive dissonance and programming getting the better of you. For you, every image needs to be explained away versus your reification of a ball model that you think you live in. And the uh, reality is it's just a picture. It doesn't need to be compared to your religious belief in a ball. It's just a picture. Beach to beach. Oh, okay, that's fair. Okay. So my question to you would be why on three separate occasions did you qualify what he was saying, even though he didn't say it, as it being uh -huh. needing comparison to your religious belief? Why Why would you assert that three times? I don't know. I guess because, I don't know, we're in a flat earth service. I just assumed that's what it was. Like, they we're debating that. So we're in a flat earth <laughs> debate, but you automatically assumed that application of your religious sphere belief would be necessary. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I thought I thought you guys were trying to convince me. I thought that was the whole thing. C I convince bet. you of what? We, we don't have to convince you of anything. It's a picture. Beach to beach. Vast distances. No explanation on our side required. But for you, when we ask you, well, what's the point of showing you a picture that's obviously and observably a flat earth? What would be the point? Mm -hmm. And on three separate occasions, you say, because I need to compare it to my spherification, my religious belief. I thought you were presenting it so I could compare my religious belief to it. No, no, son. Yeah. The Earth is obviously and observably bet. flat. And every time we present such information to people like yourself, you immediately go to, I must apply my brainwashing to it. How does this work on my model? Yeah, probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, next time. It doesn't. If, if there is a next time. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I won't. Yeah. No, um, there'll be a next this. time. You you got it, man. We're not dogging you. We're, we're just yeah, trying to get you know, the mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not okay. a personal attack on you. What 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 am I what am I, what, am I, what I want to make clear is that when cognitively presented with a picture of an obviously and observably flat plane, you uh -huh. struggle to appreciate the point of it and immediately mm -hmm. go to how does my religious belief work with this? Now, that's not a criticism of you. Most people are programmed in the same way as you are, which is to automatically assume that which you have been programmed with and say, how does this work with what I've been programmed with? As opposed to go, beach, building, nothing needs explaining. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Only if you appreciate that the Earth is flat is the point that you appreciate there is no explanation required for a mere photograph of the world we appreciate and experience but when you have a religious belief in a sphere world based on looking at the moon and saying that's a sphere therefore so am i you end up having to compare what you see with your world that you believe you live in and there is no necessity to do so mm -hmm.
I'd like to get back to the moon point, if I may. All right. Uh, if I could just say that journalism said it best when he said we are programmed to keep ourselves from being deprogrammed. Over. Profound. Now, I'd like to get back to the to the moon point. So, you're you're saying that the moon is a sphere or spherical, and yeah. the sun reflects the moon's light, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, if if the moon was a sphere, and you're saying that the sun reflects the light. I, I've got a problem because when I walk outside and, you know, on a bright moonlit night, the the light is uniformly distributed. Would you would you say it's uniformly distributed? Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty uniformly distributed. What, what, what right. You- Right. When when I put if I'm um, standing outside at night, I put my arm up and the lights hitting my arm. I mean, it, there's not parts of my arm that are not lit up. Right. Uh-huh. Or I'm looking over at the neighbor's house or my house. The the house is lit up. There, there's no breaks or anything. It, here's here's the problem is because when you have convex objects reflecting, they don't reflect light uniformly it's diffuse so if the moon is a sphere and it's reflecting the sun's light and i'm getting uniform light here on earth from the moon that's a contradiction follow wait you cut it out what'd you say i'm sorry i'm saying that that you're not getting uniform light off a sphere. And even if you take it one step further, that the uh, surface of the moon is irregular, that just compounds the issue for you because you're getting diffuse light. It's not the angle of incidence is all screwed up, not only with the shape of the moon in your narrative, but the texture of the moon in your narrative. Those things... They're contradictory. Follow? Okay. Uh, I'll have to technically, I'll have to look into that. Um, Cause as far as I know, you know, like I, I don't know that I don't know about the whole diffuse light thing. I'll have to actually look into that and see how that actually works. Uh, I could just, I could just take your word. You may be right. No, but, uh, I don't want you to take I'll never my really word. know for sure until I do my, you know, re- my own research. Yeah, on that. look up specular reflection and diffuse reflections. Mm-hmm. That'll get you going. You could just punch that in, uh, and that can get you going on it. That that's fine. Don't take my word for it. I'm just I'm just giving it to you for something to consider. All right, I'll check it out. Still looking though for that video though. I don't know if I'm yeah, gonna find that or not. I know you are. <laughs> I don't know Here, what let me happened. Get you, it was... Let me get you started. Let me get you started with that um, diffuse component. And you're looking in live stream, right? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see live stream. Yeah, you know, when you, I know you're busy doing something else. I got it. Um, let me put. Let me go ahead and put two in there. One for the mm-hmm. shape. One for the shape and one for the texture. One second. Hopefully they're back to back. Let me, I'll back to back them. I'll delete the comment in between. All right, there you go. Do you see those two in there? And then we can stop. We don't have to talk about this anymore for right now. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. You You see what I'm talking uh, about? One's with the shape, the convex shape that you're talking about. And one's with specular versus diffuse reflection. And that points more towards the uh, surface texture. Good. Ah. Okay, yeah, convex, parabolic, mirror, let's see where's beam, all right, figure two. Just that you get the pictures, you don't need to evaluate it now. I, I don't want you to, I know you're a man and you can't do more than one thing at a time, I got it. I, I suffer those <laughs> same failings. Yeah. All right, actually, I think I actually might have found, 
or I'm getting really close to, uh, to, to finding that video because I forgot to type in weather balloon. I was typing GoPro for the longest time. But it was, I believe, weather balloon. Let me see. So I'm getting closer. All right. I'll tell you when I when I got it. All right. It should take no more than like five more minutes to find. So I'm going to do that real fast. I'll be right back. Yeah, we won't bother you. Go ahead. Okay. Is there any other ballers in here? Share your pain. I used to play basketball. Share your pain. What was the Star Trek episode? What was the name of that movie with that with that guy? They were trying to find God. Was it um, Jesus of Nazareth? No, it was the name of a Star Trek movie. Uh, I can't recall. Let me try to find it. I should have found it. Share your pain. Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier. Is that it? God, this is. Yes, I'm ninety-nine point nine percent certain it is. <laughs> The Final Frontier. Yeah, I think that was it. I knew I got that from somewhere when I first started stating it. Like, well, I want to. Sh I want you to share your pain. I got it from somewhere. That's it. I know that's really deep, guys. So, I'm headed to work. I'm gonna go listen to Brenda and that guy. So, check you guys later. I was just thinking about that. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> I have that to look forward to. Oh, you're you're in oh. for some real entertainment, brother. I just uh <laughs> I get so much uh pleasure and enjoyment from this entire topic. It just it just never ends. Like the laughs never end. <laughs> I don't want to insult my man here that was just talking, but he realized it, but didn't realize it, and then realized it, but then didn't realize it. Yeah, it's hard. So for not insulting, to but just back and forth. Sorry. It's hard. <sighs> it's hard for people Over. to overcome. Indoctrination is powerful, man. It's hard. It's hard for. Yeah, it's like to you're witnessing that. like a machine malfunction. <laughs> yeah, that's cognitive dissonance. Mm. It, that's real powerful. It's really, really powerful. Humans are strange. Well, animals. that's what everybody gives me, too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. No, I meant humans are strange animals, right? A cognitive dissonance. If somebody comes along and destroys your whole worldview that you thought was truth, that's highly traumatic to some people. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but I, I can sort of understand that that mode. Right? It's, it's understandable. It, the problem comes in. When you come out here and start professing the lie after you have been shown where there are multiple in the hundreds of contradictions. See, that's where the problem lies. When yes. you come out here defending that shit, that's where that's the problem. Exactly. And I'm so glad Nathan took him through. You and Nathan took him through and held him to that. I just like had to force myself to go on mute and just wait for it, you know? <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt in the slightest. He's we're great. just helping them. Like... We're just helping them. We're assisters. We're enablers yeah. to have them share their pain in front of everyone. That's all we are. We're therapists. I, I don't profess to be a therapist in this regard. I, I, I'm not interested in their pain. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I'm just speaking for myself. It, it seems we have somebody that's gone rogue on us. Who spares? No, you. Who's no, that? Having, <laughs> having little empathy. I'm only talking specifically about the people you've just characterized. So the people who have had the lie explained laid out and detailed 
and then profess the lie in the face of that. I have no interest in their pain. I agree. I, I didn't say, wait a second. I didn't say I had interest in their pain. I said share their pain. Uh, I see. Slightly different. Uh, yes, I'm in, definitely interested in them sharing that pain. Yes, I'll agree with you then. Okay. Like conspiracy cats not being able to go to sleep at night. <laughs> did, did you catch that, right? Yeah. Ah, I, have yet to, I have yet to see that video, by the way. Somebody didn't link that video yet. Yeah, I did. I've linked it a couple of times. I can link that video. It's, yeah. Don wants unmuted so he could share his pain, Nathan. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I have to go into the Discord uh, server. Give me a minute. Yeah, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to you. Hold on, Dawn. Share your pain. Right. Um, so I've been doing a thought experiment. If possibly it is a flat earth, I've now got an existential crisis about being stuck in, in a flat world of lies. So I wondered what, where should, what's the next step after? How do I go on with my life knowing that I'm just kept here and I don't know what is to the south? Therapist? I would, uh, I would guidance, say so recognizing it first would be a good start. I can, I can feel this wave of depression like rolling across the sky. Oh, shit, I'm stuck in a prison. I don't even know the shape of it. We talked about this yesterday, Don. Why is it a prison? Well, because we lied to, I don't know, it might not be a prison, but it gives me the suggestion that I'm stuck here, like in a prison, because <laughs> I'm being lied to about the shapes. There must be a reason they want to keep me. Keep you what? Maybe it's like a zoo instead of a prison, I don't know. Keep you what? I just feel trapped. Now, now I'm considering the earth might be flat. Okay, if I may be so bold, if I changed your word to controlled as opposed to trapped, would, would, could you relate to that? Yeah, I'd say both. I'm worrying about all of these things now. So, as a motivation, your, your question, why would they lie? Well, you have, with a little bit of segue from me, kind of answered your own question, to keep you under control. Right. But how do I deal with this pain of The pain I'm kept of realizing that you are right. kept under control by others. Yeah, in in regards specifically to the shape of the earth. Well, you you relinquished their method of control in this instance the heliocentric lie. Wait, I think I found it. I think I found the video. I think I found the video. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold that phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> now that's passion. <laughs> yeah, that's global excitement. All right. It was actually one of uh, Jaronism's videos. Okay. Here we go. Post it. Do you have a timestamp on it? Oh, time. Wait, let me real fast. So raw and uncut 115,000 feet balloon launch, right? Yeah. Clever thumbnail, I've just got to say. Clever thumbnail? What's this? You see if balloon, I can find right? the flip part. There's Is it... Clever Horizon on the thumbnail. Hold on, hold on Don. We're, 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 we're taking a uh, time out for your therapy. And we're on to okay. We'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, we will get, definitely get back to this conversation, Dawn, if you don't mind. This this is uh, important. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the part where it flips specifically. Uh, I've already taken screenshots of uh, of this foot of this video before. I just don't recall taking screenshot of that flipped part. If I can find it though, Let's see, I think that happened around two two hours in. I think. Where the fuck is it? <laughs> 15,000. 
yeah, that's that's more or less uh, that's pretty much what is it, twenty miles up? Because that's five thousand, five thousand something per per mile. So we're talking about something close to yeah, twenty miles up. It's insane. I'm not even sure how you even get the numbers for that. Where the hell's the fourth part? I'll tell you what, you better be careful watching this video if you have any epileptic seizures, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just save this so I don't ever lose this video. Let me see. Let's save this. Too. Here we go. Just put it on your like, just like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you're like in a Jaren video that I, I I'm tracking with you. Oh. Well, Sorry about that. That was my phone. It actually came through to that. It's, it's just as it was a bit of a lull. Is Spurs still here? Um, yeah, it, it is annoying that I can't find videos like this because of what YouTube did. That's ridiculous. No. Like, you know how long it took me to find this? Spurs like, is, hold on a second. <laughs> Spurs is not in the Discord server. Damn, I wanted him to be involved in the conversation we don't. I'll see if I can get him back on Skype. Okay. Are you Call saying when the this chemotherapy? Balloon... Hold on a second. Uh, Why does he need a hug? We should but... do um, a psychology special, Nathan, with me and chemo. Hey, hold off, Don. What did we tell you? <laughs> That's my bad. Sorry, Dawn, you're getting told off because of me. Yes, I did just bring it back on to you. I'm trying to get chemo on the call. I'm going to add him to Skype. Hopefully, I can get him back to, to do just that. But I, for now, I, it's I, on hiatus or on the back burner temporarily. Okay, what are you saying? Uh... Uh, our guy are you saying that when the balloon pops the camera flips at one point it is upside down for like a split second or, or so I, I think it does it actually a few times but uh and, and i will admit i have had this uh, argument with someone before um and the thing is uh, i'm not sure what exact lens this uses it's definitely not uh what do you call it a uh, fish eye but i will admit um when the er when the earth uh when it goes when the horizon uh goes vertical right uh it does it does concave when it's vertical but when it flips to when it flips upside down though the curve stays with the earth though so if i had to guess the lens that's being used here is only the uh the vertical uh pixels are sort of uh bending in because it it, it doesn't seem to change when it when it flips 180 though when it flips right. 180 the, the curve still stays with the earth though yeah it's I'm just getting, it's, i'm getting sick of watching this man so you're going to have to give me a time hack all right, I think it's roughly around one hour and fifty-four minutes. It starts to spin there, but I need I need to find when it goes upside down. Though, hold on. But is there any point? You've you've just in in the disclosure just disclaimed that that your point isn't made when it flips over and goes concave. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying when it when, when the when the horizon goes vertical when when when, uh, when it goes vertical when the line's going up and down that's when it uh, concaves. But when it flips all the way one eighty when the Earth is now on top and the the the, um, the blackness of space is on the bottom. The curve stays with the Earth. So I'm saying that uh, if if the lens is distorted in any in any way, it's only vertically. It's yeah. I I don't know what lens that is though, but it's only vertically where the lens is curved. Because I, I t I'll I'll get into the details. Let me just real fast find where it flips though, real fast. Okay, we've got we've got chemo. Only so to... hopefully once this conversation runs out, chemo can help us out. Yep, I yeah. see him. He's in our call. So just stay on mute, Chemo. Are you on mute? Off, you don't have to go get Chemo. Are you well, on I just, mute, I just, wanted, I just wanted him to be part of the conversation, Dawn, that's all. all right. Don't get paranoid, Dawn. That's a, that's a completely other therapy session. Chemo, <laughs> stay on mute, man. Okay? Chemo. Let's see where the hell is it flip? <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm wait. on mute. Oh, oh, oh. oh, never mind. Stabilizing. You're, Shit. you're on Fuck. mute. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah. Why am I here, lol? You're here because the the a position that you've argued for right last week really irritating has finally come to a point where it's useful. So you, we we need you in a moment, Spurs. <gasps> okay, I think I, I found the, I found the shot. Okay. Uh. It's uh, roughly 154.33, or 154.32 is when it exactly popped. Actually, you know what? Hold on. It actually flips around a few times. Okay, yeah. Uh, 154.32 is when it flips. 
when it flips. 154.32. Yeah. That was quick flip, man. Yeah. Got to slow this down a lot. So playback speed, go to 0.25. Let's try that. Yeah, and then if, if you use the greater than or less than keys, uh, you can go frame by frame. I don't know if uh, you know that. I know this, that's like a little hack. You can go frame <laughs> by frame with that, though. What greater than less than less than uh or the period and comma not comma uh is it comma I can't remember now whatever yeah <laughs> wait so are wait, we vetting our world hack? view on a quarter of a second let's see it's, it's maybe I don't know well actually I can't talk for you guys but <laughs> are we doubling down. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Oh god, I, it's going to take me a while to get there. Hold on a second. You get there? Can you take a screenshot so I can have it? Oh, so you're not looking at this? Me no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Why should you when you have other people to do their work for you? You know my motto. If everybody does a little, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> yes, I do. I know the motto. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what the point is here. Oh, oh I think that might have been it. When it's completely 180. Let me go back. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can get that effect with a GoPro easily. All right, it's coming. Hold on. We're going. It's starting to flip, and let me go back. Just do you, do you want me to get uh, Arm Arm Raider? Is that your name, Arm Raider? Not talking. Let me go back a little bit. You said oh, arm raider. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's I'm arm terrible matter. with names, man. Um, arm matter, <laughs> arm matter. Okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not in Discord. I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at this friggin' video. It's driving me absolutely crazy. 120. Let me fast forward it here. Uh, I'm wondering. So, someone's already, want someone's already got a screen cap of it. Somebody already got it? Looks like it in the Discord server. Where? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Arm matter. He got. Yeah, okay. We're waiting him for him to speak to it. What? <laughs> okay, you you screen shot shot at this. Uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, wait. What? What? What, what am I? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Do you have a point here that you wanted to share with us? Oh, uh, hold on. Me real fast. Uh, we get it up real fast. Hold on. That's what now you guys going to hate this uh, one because I, I know uh, someone mentioned this earlier. The What do you call it? The, the squish? I know someone brought up the squish. Whatever. I think that was yesterday. Yeah. The... <laughs> Don't get me started on the squish. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, 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 hold on. Yeah, hold I've sat down bogus. now. Are you... Precious time, that man. Puppy lover. Other things to do. Puppy lover I've in the chat picture. is Jim Panda. He's in the chat right now. Sorry, I'll go on mute. Thank I just want to know what the score is. Why have I got this picture? Why am I looking at it? What's the point of all this? Our matter? Hold on. I think the original point was that somebody was trying to use this as proof of curvature. No, uh, I was using it because I, I don't know. Wait, what was the point? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this your is argument. Your point, bro. <laughs> oh, my, my whole argument was if you guys, okay, not if you guys, uh, if, because uh, the whole thing was that, because I know someone earlier was saying that, what was it, four cameras, there was concave, then there was like 
uh, what do you call it, uh, fisheye, and there was like the other stuff. They were saying that if you had it at the center, then you could you can kind of be like, oh well, yeah, it's kind of curved, and then it's like, okay, that's the actual shape. But that one's kind of like it's kind of weak because you can't. How do you really justify the exact center of this? You know, and even then, you don't even know if the you know the lens is perfect or not. It could be like maybe the whatever. Anyway, uh, if you have uh, a non you know uh, fisheye lens. Uh, camera doing it right and then you can and if you capture this curve below at the center and above the center right and that curve stays the same then i'm not saying it's 100 percent you know curve but it's strong i would say i would say it's relatively strong evidence um uh, when i say evidence i don't i don't mean proof at least for me i don't mean proof i just it, i just it just for me it means you know it, it's it makes it you know really you know believable i don't know uh but yeah so what I did was I took like screenshots of where it's yeah below at the center and above the curve. Uh, and you can see like, it still stays kind of, you know, curvy. Yeah. Um, now you could just say, yeah, like, I don't know, maybe it's the lens, but that's, that's why I showed the upside down because if, if it was just the lens, then you'd imagine that the curve would, wouldn't stay with the earth and it, it would just curve the blackness of space. You know what I'm saying? But the curve still stays with earth, you know? Oh, uh, so, I don't so know. you also That's did just... the squishy? Yeah, I did the squishy, the squishy thing. The, the <laughs> I squish, see whatever. those pics down here below. Yeah, yeah, I see the squishy. He did the Nathan. Do you see the squishies? No, the squishy. I didn't see the squishies. Let's have a little look at the squishies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, squishies. <laughs> just scroll down a little bit. You'll see the squishies. The squish. Oh, epic. Okie dokie then. Yeah. I mean, the only reason why I like that video is because it's it's uncut, though. You know what I'm saying? There's no, like, you know, it's uncut. It's raw, you know? Um, so, I mean, it's really hard to, like, edit something. At least, at least I, you know, because it's, like, you know, it's about hours and hours on end, you know, where it's, like, I don't know. It's just, it's just hard okay. to, like, edit something like that. Um, and... I don't know. I, I just like this video a lot, though. I, I like, and then that's that's another thing. I, like I said, it may, may, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe the vi maybe the video doesn't really prove anything. Maybe it's something that you know we can't explain. Whatever. But for me, though, it's it's good proof for me at least, uh, or evidence, or whatever. And, and it's 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 what makes me still stick to you know the ball. Um, if you know, I'm pretty sure that there's something out there that could you know get me to change. But this, it, it, like for me though, it's just I don't know. It's just. I'm I'm still like on the ball side. I don't know. It's just I don't know. That and I don't know. Like oh, hold on. There's there's another shot. Hold on. Let me get some more shots. Hold on. Also, that video is by by a flat earther, so we can definitely trust images yeah. that we're seeing. Although, I mean, yeah, yeah. Although, to be honest, though, I, I don't think that's his original footage, though. It okay. was it, it was by another flat earther. I forgot their names, though. But it was a family, though. It was a uh, it was a uh, this one dad. He would just yeah every day he would just send the his weather uh, balloons up, whatever. And journalism sort of just kind of stole that. <laughs> At least I, I think, because I remember, I remember seeing this on another channel too, though. Uh -oh. oh, I and think it, I remember this. And then he, Jaron, was commenting in the gentleman uh, in his comment se section of the YouTube video. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I commented in that same thread. I remember it now. That was that was a while ago. Yeah, this wasn't Jaren's. It was the gentleman with the with, with his kid, and they were doing yeah, and they were yeah. sending these balloons up. Yep, yep, I remember. Yep. So interesting. So did, Don, did they list the specs of the lens then? I I can't remember Nathan. They should. They should because I don't know what the hell's going on with that. <laughs> so Don, this wasn't taken uh, by a flat earther. So your whole point is moot. Oh. Even though I could care less, oh. really doesn't impact well, it. The point because Jerry right. has uploaded it, we can definitely trust that it's not CGI. That's my point. 
Well, he uploaded he, a video yeah, from he's somebody else. checked it out, though, and made sure it's not fake, and it before he's uploaded it. He checked it out. What did he do? I don't know. I'm just saying the Flat Earthers are honest, didn't they? So you can, you guys can trust them. Well, I, I believe the family was actually – was actually uh, they were Flat Earthers because I, I remember, at least when I was watching their videos, I remember I was looking through them. I was like, oh, look, this, here's a Globe Earther. And then I looked at the comment – I looked at the uh, description, and he's like, I'm a Flat Earther. And I was like, oh, okay. I could be I like, mistaken then. then because that, <laughs> I'm sure this wasn't it, because this guy was a teacher or something. If you go to the info, it says it's not Jaron's video. It's uh, Dwayne Callum, who I thought it was before. So, oh, it's yeah, Dwayne it's... Callum. Yeah, I was off, it was off topic that this wasn't the one I was thinking about. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, does anyone, says anybody, in, in the, does anybody want to give some therapy? Any any flat earthers have an answer to the squishies and the one hundred and eighty degree turn? Hello. Uh, well, I think um, you know. Is oh, that no, Spurs, Spurs, we're not ready for therapy. Not your therapy. This isn't your therapy session. <laughs> oh, no, go, no, go on, go on, Spurs. Well, I was going to—I shouldn't say anything with, uh, that's painful in life, and they're trying to recover from such a heavy blow. They just need time, you know, time to mature, time to process, time to understand what's happened to them. You're—you're you're speaking my language. You ever hear that song? Time, time <laughs> has come today. Yeah, right. Nathan, sing it for us. Time. No, no, no. no Spurs. He's showing a picture of curve. I don't now, see now where you're where, piping I mean, up. Where, where was this? In in live stream Discord server where you're not currently. But nonetheless, <laughs> he's shown a picture of curve. He squashed up his picture to pronounce, make the curve more pronounced. And John's asking any flat earthers got any opinions on this. I'm intentionally keeping quiet. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say. But I mean. <laughs> Okay, what you want to have a conversation with him, or did you think this is curvature, or what, what's the point here? Compress. Well, for, no, it's not. for me, real quick, the first when he brought this up, the first question I asked him was if, if this is in the same, if this still shot that he was talking about is in the same video where you can see concave, you can see flat, you can see curve, I, I would just throw it out outright. Because how can I trust a still shot if it's during the video, it's doing all types of movements? <laughs> so how am I supposed yeah, to Yeah, that was exactly that? what that's, I guess. That's yeah. me. Okay, that, that's a good response. What about the squishies? Is that uh, one good way? Um, what's his name? I, can, I think I need glasses. I can barely see. Is it um, Armada? Yeah, your picture. Or... So anyway, yes, yes. I mean, if you want to verify curvature in that form, what I tell board earthers when they take a, a, an image of what looks to be curved, um, I say get the video and get a side by side. So you have a composite of frame by frame as the camera pans. So, you know, you'll be able to draw a line over the first image. And, you know, your side by side pictures, you should see that line. OK. Uh, there should be a drop. So whatever you think is curvature, um, you would need the video for it and draw a line over what you think is curve and then just uh, draw vertical lines and, slide, you know, go inside of the where you think is curve. And they should get longer and longer and longer. I might have to illustrate it, but I don't know if you'll see it in um, on the live stream or whatever. But, yeah, you need a composite armada. That's the best, best thing of this of the same video, not different videos. Do you understand what I mean? Don't quite follow. If I could screen share, I could demonstrate. Is it, um, are, you, are you live now? Now, now? I'm not now my existential no. crisis is deepening because I'm seeing curvature experiments done by Armada. Those aren't experiments. So. Those aren't exper oh, Excuse me. Those aren't experiments. Well, okay. Observations.
this is making my existential crisis even worse now because I don't know what to do. <laughs> Don, you're going to be all right, man. Is this, okay, is are it... we coming to a conclusion on this R matter? Yeah. Yeah, did you hear what Chocolate said? Wait, is that the one that said that he had the existential crisis? Which one is that? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> hey, hey, Chocolate, can you... Can you... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good one. God, can you explain it very concisely one more time, please? All right, well... Like I said, uh, I'm not. A, I mean, I'm not an optics guy by any means, right? But when he first brought this up, he was saying that in the same video, that the the lens was giving the effects of concave, of curve, of flat. And my uh, question was, you know, somebody yeah. somebody took a still shot of it, and to me, I feel like, well, if during the course of the video, you have all these effects going on, how can you trust one still shot from this video? I mean, oh, to me, it's it happens. I think actually it flips around twice, actually. But uh, we have to check how many times it flips. So, on. Uh, yeah, but regardless of how many times it flips, in the course of that one video, you see the the horizon being manipulated by the lens, right? You see it at one point concave, at one point it's a little curved, and then it's flat. Because I I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I've seen videos like this before, so I get what you mean mean but to me i feel like taking a still shot from a video like this uh, doesn't really prove anything it's just you can't even really uh, qualify what you're looking at because the thing has been moving the entire time you know what i mean yeah let me see I mean, well, yeah that's why i was saying like was, you but... know like it could be something we don't know you know going on but like I don't know. It's just, for the most part, for me at least, it's just it doesn't seem any. It doesn't seem like sketchy or anything. Uh, it, essentially, what he's saying, you got a your measuring stick is a rubber ruler. Rubber ruler. Okay, that's a good. Yeah, it's it's constantly changing, so it's real hard to trust. <laughs> the exactly. Elastic ruler. <laughs> exactly. It now. Any any comments on the squishy? Or, or this is just going back to the rubber ruler, also. I'll have to. I'll look be at honest. Ones, I honestly. haven't looked at the squishy, so give me a second. Yeah, the squishies I'll, I'll, are I'll, just beneath the ones that he posted. If I can find that lens, the lens that they use, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Because yeah, and remember only... what I said about. Remember, I, I'm not trying to cut you off. Remember what I said about lenses at the beginning of this discussion. Right. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, lenses. Yeah, yeah. There's no perfect lens. It 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 doesn't exist and will never exist. I'm not trying to obfuscate yeah. this. I'm just telling you that it, 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 it's a rubber ruler. You can't. It's not a hard measure, is what I'm trying to say. There's mm -hmm. no way around it. So it's going to be inconclusive at best. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much the, the first answer I gave you to this this whole thing. And yeah, I've seen the squishies now. And <laughs> I mean, you're squashing or squishing a picture to achieve curvature. But if that's not reality, be fat, I don't see how we can take that as reality. No, it shouldn't I, I like be to flat, operate right? in the really is uh, level. <laughs> no, it That's shouldn't be flat, I because I said your measuring stick is a rubber ruler. That's already clearly established. So if you squish a rubber ruler, mm -hmm. it's still a rubber ruler. What do you mean? I mean, the photos are mean? rubber ruler. The the no, camera. not the photos are the rubber ruler. The lens is the rubber ruler. Oh, okay. So we can't use it because of the lens. I'm not saying yeah, you I, can't. I okay, can, um, can I can I ask a can I ask Armada a question? Mm -hmm. Please. <clears throat> so then, since you see all three forms of horizon in that video, could you safely say that it's reasonable to think that any one of those three could be possible? Wait. 
are you referring to the my 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 pictures? You said three, you said three horizons. I'm looking. I see a picture. Oh, the videos, the video on Jaren. All three horizons, flat, concave, convex. Is it possible that it could be any of the three? Uh, because you see all three, because it goes back and forth and back and forth, right? Well, oh, you mean you mean the video that I sent, the one I sent? Yes. Uh, I mean, like I said before, it only concaves uh when it's going vertical. Um, it never concaves when it's going horizontal, though. It's only vertical. So, like I said, it, it, you know. No, I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you see all three does that leave you with the possibility that it could be all three any of the three part that's a tough one I guess if you want to you know if you see all three in the in the evidence that you're stating it could possibly be any of the three right okay I, I guess okay so if we could just actually take it back and to the beginning where John showed his picture. Mm -hmm. One foot elevation. What was it? 13 miles? How does that work on any of those three models? Oh, are we changing up the question? We, oh, we oh, hold on a second, Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, We're black. taking it down to the to the 16th of an inch on that ruler, that elastic ruler. <laughs> John's photo. Oh, uh... Over. What was it? The, the beach? Uh, let me see his picture again. I don't know if... Uh, let's see where the flip is it. Uh, yes. I'm, I mean... I mean, I'm not trying to... I mean, it's a still picture. Though. If, I, if, if you can give me the video, though, then I can, you know, I can say for sure, you know, these certain things are, you know... Because, like, if it's, if it's, you know, like, I don't... You said it's a foot above? How does it... Well, do you believe your very eyes in a still picture? Uh, I mean, I don't. It's just hard to believe that that's a foot, though, a, a foot elevation right there. It doesn't look. It doesn't look. Right, back, okay. it, like, I just don't want to sidetrack off this subject. So, we're talking about pictures of a, a, a balloon launch, and the images that are presented. Mm -hmm. And let's just bring it back on track. What are we specifically identifying in these images? Wait, what was that? You cut off, cut off, cut out a bit. Sorry. What in these images, the balloon footage images? What are we identifying? What are we looking at? We're comparing the horizon from lower elevations to higher elevations. Fine. The horizon. Now, yeah. what is the horizon? On a on a ball Earth uh, specifically, that's uh, where it more or less. That's like a physical, like I don't know, it's hard to say, but it's 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 like a physical, like after that, you know, it starts to curve down. I I don't really know how to word that, but it's yeah, it's like a physical thing. Yeah, it's like the shape, yeah, of the Earth, I guess. If you want to put it that way, I don't know. No, so the horizon is is an arbitrary location. It's it's where the ground appears to meet the sky, mm -hmm. but you're describing it based on your reification that it is already the leading edge of a sphere. So mm -hmm. you, you have a, a presupposition that you're applying to these images, which is to say yeah. that the horizon is a physical location you could travel to, an obstruction mm -hmm. of things in the distance, the leading edge of a sphere, if you will. Mm -hmm. Wait, so... Okay. It's just another another example where an arbitrary description of something, the horizon, is reified by virtue of your religious belief in a sphere model into a physical location, a leading edge. It's not. It's it's the position where the ground appears to meet the sky as opposed to yeah. the leading edge of your sphere religious belief. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, it's, I, I guess, yeah, it is, it is, it is a belief, though. It is a, at the end of the day, but uh, right. It's but, just... but your belief is in a physical location that that will change based on your altitude because it's a physical location, but it isn't. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just, I don't. It's like okay, I don't know. It's, but, I don't but, know what else. Okay, to... I'll, I'll make, I'll make a point. Assessing where an apparent 
position is in a photograph is meaningless. It doesn't mm -hmm. prove anything. So assessing this apparent location and saying it curves up, curves down, or looks flat doesn't prove anything. Yeah. Right, but you're holding it based on your presupposition that it's going to be proving sphere because it's the leading edge of a sphere, therefore it makes all the difference whether or not it's curved. But that's based on your presupposition that it's the leading edge of a sphere. So you've applied your religious belief based on your indoctrination and gone from there. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I guess. I, I just, I don't know. I just don't know what, what it, like for me uh, personally, I don't know what else it could be. I, I, it, I could think... be any, it could be something else. I could, I could just be, you know, ignorant what, what, what to could what be? it really is. What, what, what could be? Like, like, and like I, I don't know. I don't want to bring it up again because I mean we're already kind of over it already. But uh, I was, like for me personally, I don't know what could be causing you know as you go higher the curve being more pronounced. I, I mean I you, I don't know personally what. Sure, what you else just done it, it again be. though. The curve being more pronounced. The yeah, horizon is an apparent position. You applying your fundamentalist sphere belief to that apparent location doesn't mean you need to explain why what you consider to be a physical location would mm -hmm. bend. Now, just the fact that it becomes concave, flat, and convex should instantly mm -hmm. dismiss the idea that it's a physical location. Physical locations don't bend up and down, but yet your selective yeah, reasoning means you pull out the bits that adhere to your religious belief when it's bending down, looking spherical, and you apply your idea of your sphere belief to that which you see in selection. So you ignore where the yeah. ground, which is obviously not the leading edge, or it wouldn't bend up, would it? Can a ground that's physically bending ever bend up? No. But you ignore that. Because there's bits where it looks like your belief, right? Well, it's, Wait, a, it's it, a position it up, that's though? apparent. It's not an actual position. If it was, it definitely wouldn't bend. It will, okay, but, okay, but it would though on a on a if it was a ball though if if it was I'm not saying it isn't if it was though. You 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 think it's an actual physical? You think the horizon is a physical thing, the the edge of the sphere? Well, if it was the physical edge of a sphere, it would never change shape. It's changing shape, suggesting that whatever you're seeing in the image isn't representative of physical locations or leading edges of anything. It's distorting it, changing exactly. its shape, so it cannot be relied upon. Even if what you were seeing was a physical hard line, it's not. It's an apparent position. Exactly. It's huh. not representing reality, so you would have to dismiss it. Wait, so do you what do you follow that? What, am I, what was that? Yeah, I'm just saying, do you follow that? It's not representing reality. If it's going through a a list of different physicalities, that's non sequitur mm -hmm. on its face. Oh. All right. I mean, I guess that's all right. To simplify it, if you're taking a picture of a triangle and mm -hmm. as you spin the camera around, it looks circular and then square, can you assess mm -hmm. the measurements of it as a triangle? Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty true, I guess, yeah. Right, so if you're going to assess the curved nature of what you assume is a physical location, and sometimes it bends up, sometimes it's flat, sometimes it bends down, you're not going to be getting any accurate assessments of your reification of that being the leading edge when it's changing. So it must immediately yeah. be discounted as not proving anything. Yeah. I, 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 I see what you mean, yeah, that makes that makes sense, but it's like it's just because it, we know well we, okay not we we don't all know and like how lenses no, just work, say um, it just say it we're not going to hold you to task on it you're a newbie we get it so if you want to say we all know it's a ball just say that yeah. don't don't be hesitant about it we're not going to jump down your throat for expressing your fundamentalist belief people do it all yeah. the time they dance around it where you're just hesitant to say it yeah no I, okay yeah what i was just going to say was i mean because I, 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 we 
I guess, yeah, we sort of know how like lenses work. So we could say what, you know, could be, you know, happening, you know, in the, yeah, I guess we can never really say for sure, but we could, we could, you know, maybe say this might be happening and that's why it's concaving there or we, you know, this is happening and that's why it looks maybe flat there. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Cause I mean, if, if it's, if it's not the lens, cause it's gotta be the lens. If it's not the lens, then what could it be? It, it, maybe it's, uh, I want to say atmosphere. That would make any sense. But, but dude, it, it would have to think about it, right? It would have to be the lens, right? Because let's yeah, say be lens, yeah. for, just begging a question. Let's say earth is a globe, right? It is yeah. a ball. So now you're looking at this footage in the camera and you see this ball huh. turn flat. Huh. And then you see the flat horizon turn concave and then yeah. back. So how can you trust that? Because you know yeah, if it's a ball, it's just going to be a ball. It's not yeah, going to that's flex need... and bend. Yeah. That's why we need the we need to know the actual lens specs. We need to know what kind of lens that is cuz because it, it, is it, it seems matter? That... it's not going to matter. Yeah, we went over this as well. A lens is a lens. It's yeah. distinct characteristic. The thing that makes it work will always cause this problem. If you iron out that which causes the problem, it's no longer a lens. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I guess. Eh, I don't know. Okay, I think we've drawn that to a distinct close. And Kimo's been very wait patiently waiting. And hopefully so no, is Dawn. No, he left. Oh, bummer. Oh, so Sorry about that. I um, announced it. Go ahead and grab him. Go ahead and call him again. <laughs> He's not going to join a second time. Yes, he is. T tell him we're ready for him. We're ready for chemotherapy. Uh, I, I can't add him to the call. He's already part of the call. Can't add him? No, once he's he's left, he can rejoin the call of his own volition. But I can't incessantly pester people who are already on a call. <laughs> the Skype doesn't let you do that. <laughs> he's he's decided to not hang around, which I don't blame him given the amount of time we took. Dawn. Still there. Mm -hmm. Dawn. Dawn, we have it abandoned you in your time of pain and need. There, that's right. There's plenty of therapists on board. Operators are standing by. Yes, they are. I want to hear some more existential crisis. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been advised otherwise, because in, in his little statement, he was disclaiming that, should I contemplate the nature of being lied to on a massive scale, how would I cope with such a thing? Now, I bet you can already understand or guess what my answer is going to be to that, but I was hoping Spurs would offer a bit of balance. Mine would be Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels? Why? I don't see this as depressing. <laughs> On the contrary. Uh, you know, first, you just have to reckon with a creator, and then everything flows from that. Then then it, it takes care of itself. <laughs> that was going to be my opening to question but to Dawn. You know, do you have any skeletons in your closet? Anything you should be concerned about? That was going to be my That's opener, right. but he's disappeared. Yeah, yeah. He's still in the call. He's just on mute. I, I think it hits home with Don. I think it's that he doesn't want to come to the realization that there's this massive lie going on. I think it's really just that simple. He doesn't want to believe that his entire world, this globe that he's thought he's lived See, I never, I never lie. thought, I never thought I could relate to Don, but he just messaged me. He said he's cooking bacon. I completely understand. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> okay, because well, I've, I I've, could smell it in my house right now. Well, so I've, I've, you're I've forgiven. I've dumped the Discord server because I don't know chocolate. You, uh, you were in the, uh, you were in the call yesterday when we discussed doing this, right? I faked rounding out the after show to try and encourage some of the ballers to actually talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you dropped it. Uh, I will do. You dropped the Discord. They're not hearing us. I don't think I'm in there anymore. Now I've dropped the Discord server. I'll round out the after, the after show proper now. But at least we generated some conversation in them, right? Yes. I think it's just because it's so intimidating when you know that you're being recorded. Yes. 
So you've surreptitiously recorded him, and he's going to hear it, right? Yeah. Well, I, you can't have it where every time I end the show, I hear in the aftermath, oh, everyone started talking, the ballers started putting their opinions forward and expressing their beliefs once the show's over. So like, oh, what's the point in having the Discord server then? Yeah, the, the, yeah but the jig's up. Oh, the jig's up now. I could only get away with it once. Yes. That's okay. Yeah, but they won't catch on. I don't think they'll catch on. Just continue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. We shall see. So you're you going to end it properly? I think it, it was bad before, right? Because they knew all these recordings were, you know, obviously on your channel. But I think now it's worse because we're toe tagging them. So we're bringing light to these little snips of people just getting absolutely obliterated. Yes. And that's. That's probably making it worse. They're like, oh, I don't want to be toe tagged. <laughs> yeah, it's cost you know? prohibitive. <laughs> yeah, it used to be that they'd disappear into the ether, right? They'd just vanish. Um, it would disappear into a number of, what is it, 878 shows. And you'd never find George Netanyuk, you know, making a complete ass of himself. Whereas you strap it out there with George Netanyuk toe tag 425 or whatever it is. And it's really easy to find and go, hey, look at this. <laughs> post it yeah, in one it comment section um, it's one of my favorite the playlist that toe tag playlist is outstanding if i get bored i just run the playlist <laughs> listen to people making a, <laughs> a complete ass of themselves <laughs> yeah it's it's glorious i love that and make sure you got another toe tag don't do another brenda toe tag it's not worth it but you got the rumpus toe tag right from today yeah yeah, yeah, that'll definitely get cut out once it's once it's aired. <laughs> but right, before it gets really noisy here, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who've joined in, it, tuned in on the Nathan Oakley 1980 promo stream. Actually, did a proper round out for real this time. Um, be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum, which you should definitely join. A massive thank you to all of today's live and after show debating panels for making the show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!